Every team trains hard. Every team prepares to win. But when U.S. Army soldiers take the field, it's best if the other guys don't bother showing up. See if you have what it takes at GoArmy.com slash team. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. As a millennial, for me it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do everything online or through an ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. That's why we're the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our low mortgage rates, including 60-day rate lock and no cost to you. Purchase or refinance your home today. Kern Schools, together we have something special. This is where we're going to train the kids to actually get jobs in the industry. We're going to give them the basic tools that they need, also the skills that they need to understand where they fit into the industry. All the animated things, because we have everything that we need in the scenes. They are learning the principles of animation, Photoshop, they're learning how to animate in 2D and 3D. And when you swap to that shape, then you're just going to drag these over here. The storyboard aspect of creating basically the skeleton of the story and then just sort of directing people in my vision of what I want in the story. And it's also giving me the advantage of Mr. Plourd since he's worked at so many companies. Being able to put it in my resume and be like, this is the art direction I've received. learning a lot about how mobile apps are made, uh, the programming and coding that goes into it, uh, along with the time and effort. Along with that is also uh, the entrepreneurship of the class, learning how to run our own business. We're also learning basic marketing skills, people skills, graphic design, and social media marketing so that they can freelance, they can work on their own, they can apply for a job, they can go to BC or Cal State or any other university who offers programs that are specific within the mobile app development concentration or business concentration. With my future and career, I do plan on being somewhat of an entrepreneur, owning my own business, sort of a clothing brand line. And so this will definitely help me out with possibly an app for my company and uh, the entrepreneur part, helping me be able to run my business smoothly uh, as I can make it go. what a game designer is, what they do, and how video games are made, and how to deconstruct them. We're also going to be teaching the hard skills, which includes learning the Unreal Engine. What the Unreal Engine is, is it's a game development tool that students will be able to use to make their very own video games. And this is something that actually industry professionals use every day to make uh, some of the top selling games. They're all the same size. You're all on the same plane. There's no undulating terrain or anything like that. Our instructor, he's really amazing. He encourages everybody. He's really fun and he makes learning fun. So they've got top of the line computers here and they're set up to excel. I would be surprised if other students their age coming out of high school would have anywhere near the level of expertise that these guys are going to have. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Kern High Network Game of the Week. We're in Arvin at Barley Field. This is Kyle Wiley on Play by Play, and with me tonight is Rich Cornford, who's done a great job doing some color commentating, um, helping us out, get us going on the Kern High Network. One thing that everyone should know about us, we're from the Northern League, which is over on the Central Coast. I don't even think it exists anymore, it, but 
Nonetheless, we were Northern League boys with Rich Cornford going to Lompoc High School and yours truly going to the much esteemed, <laughs> highly touted Rigetti High School. Rich, what are your, some of your opening thoughts right now as we get going in this game? Well, first off, uh, I never lost to Rigetti. Oh, okay. We'll make that clear. But, uh, you know, this is a big game for both these schools. Yeah, yeah. They're, they've struggled uh, opening the season. Both have played really tough competition. But this is a chance for each of them to, to get their first win of the year. And, uh, you know, both of these coaches won it really bad. Yeah, absolutely. Talking with both, with both uh, Coach David Coldiron and Edgar Mares. These teams, their programs are kind of struggling right now. They're trying to find their identity, and uh, I think a big win, a big victory with similar teams. We saw them at the scrimmage, and there are glimpses and hopes of good things to come. I can tell you both coaches are really putting in the time and energy to get that win because I think every kid wants to come out victorious on there, and, and it's tough night in and night out not getting that W. And we both know these coaches, not a lack of effort or a lack of trying. It's just kind of a little bit of bad luck on their side. Right. And I've been in their shoes. Yeah. Uh, when I was an assistant at Wasco, we had a 19-game losing streak. Yeah. And we knew we had some talent yeah. that year when we lost our first three games. We finally got that win, and we won the next five after that. So it can catapult you onto bigger and better things. And let me tell you, we have a beautiful evening. If you look at this, and Julian's done a good job of getting – the purples and the oranges. I don't know if it's the poor air quality or if it's just <laughs> God's country out here in Arvin, but it's a beautiful backdrop. Um, excited to have everyone being involved here. Uh, KernHighNetwork.com is where we're live broadcasting this game. Get all highlights and replays on Twitter at KHSD Athletics or on Facebook, Kern High Network. As we see the ROTC making their way out right now, as we always do. We like to pan in, give respect to our nation with the national anthem. And as soon as they get out here, as we always do, we're going to be quiet. And, and draw our attention Brigade, for the national the anthem. Be back in just a second. Please welcome to the field the Arvin High School U.S. Army Junior Reserve Officer Training Command at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, please remove your ball caps and rise. To honor America, we play our national anthem. And welcome back, everybody. Awesome job by Arvin High right there. Kind of a small little band right here, but they did a great job of playing the national anthem. And let the record show that as a Rigetti Warrior, we were 3-1 and one against the Lompoc Braves. I was going to say 4-0, oh, but hey, they got us my junior year, but it's okay. We Napoleon to, Kaufman might have had a little something to do with that. Right? That was my brother, okay. so I, that was me as a kid. But we're excited to be here tonight at Barley Stadium. Uh, these Arvin Bears, who we were talking about earlier, in that mid kind of 2005 to 2011 era, they had some tough teams. 
And one thing I'll tell you about Arvin, there is a lot of fight, a lot of scrap in, in an Arvin Bears team. It's the tradition dating back to 1949 when the school was built. Legendary names like the Tarvers and different people coming through there. Our fellow play-by-play -play guy who's at East and Highland tonight, Vance Palm, was an Arvin Bear. So there's a lot of traditions that's come out of Arvin High, and I know it means a lot to Edgar Morris, who is an Arvin High grad bringing this team back to prominence is of utmost important for him as well. Well, you know, I had the privilege of uh, coaching against both Chuck yeah. Chamberlain and Edgar Mares. Absolutely. And the first person I turned to when I got hired as the head coach at West High yeah. was Chuck Chamberlain. Wow. Because I wanted to know what he did to get his Number players one, so tough. Because they always yeah. played, you, played you hard and were very physical. And, and you, you're hitting it right on that. We're talking about legends right here. Chuck Chamberlain's got to be right there. All right. Miramonte will be receiving. It looks like number one, Daniel Anthony, is going to return. Takes it back. He's at the 20 right now, doing a little dancing right now, and it looks like he's going to be tackled at the 24-yard line where the Miramonte Lions, coached by David Coldiron, will take over, and the Arvin Bears hustling out on defense. That was a good kick by Antonio Garcia, the kicker, uh, yeah. directionally kicking it, trapping him in the corner. Miramonte still got a decent return out of it, but uh, excited to see this kicker. I was watching him in warm-ups, and he was making them from 45 yards out with plenty of room to spare. And you know how important it is to have good special teams. It's the difference of the game, those smaller things. We, in the pistol formation for Miramonte, maybe a little wing on there going in motion. The handoff is given. Two-yard gain, maybe three. We'll give him two right now. It's going to be second and eight with the carry. Number 10, Hector Soretta with the ball car carrying the ball, brings up second down for the Miramonte Lions. Well, and Hector's 5'10", 210, and Coach Coldiron says he's the team leader out there. So we expect a lot of him tonight. Once again, it looks like a little double wing action coming out of the pistol for Miramonte. Another little motion right there, kind of a, a zone read. Once again, they're giving it to Hecker, Hector for another two, three yards, maybe setting up third and short. As a head coach, you got to like those third and shorts. Your options are much cleaner than being third and long. Yes, you do. You've got the ability to, to run it or throw it here, which means the defense has to be able to play both. They can't overload on you. They can't just line up and rush you hard, put, put a nickel back in. So... A Absolutely. good situation, I think, for the first drive for Miramonte. Absolutely. In typical Arvin fashion that we've seen, they like to bring five guys up to the line of scrimmage. Once again, it's a healthy dose of Hector, and it looks like it's going to be a Miramonte first down with that carry. Well, Arvin certainly has them scouted because they had no safety back there. Yep. They, they brought everybody up. They figured it was a run. It was a run, but they still couldn't stop it. So that's frustrating as a defensive coordinator. And we're curious to see if Miramonte is going to take their shots without that safety over there opening up the middle of the field. We'll see how this game plays. But what I would do right now, keep giving the ball to Hector until they can fix it. Three or four yards of carry, long drives is going to really zap them. Once again, they stack the box, no safety up top. In motion again, another healthy dose of Hector. Quarterbacks looking to give it to him. Looks to be a one-yard gain for the Lions. Timing might have been a little bit off on that play. Um, they didn't get the push they were looking for up front. I know Coach Coldiron likes his offensive line. Uh, they got a couple good linemen up there. Blockies Giannis is an up-and-coming junior. And then Jacob Brito, who really they think is their best veteran offensive lineman over there. And I kind of like the approach. Start off by establishing the run game first. See what you can do. See what they can get. May have some mismatch down here. Once again, we're getting to double wing. Once again, kind of a little counter play. Quarterback keeps it. And he kind of finds himself at another third and short. That's going to be quarterback number eight, Angel number Torres. Eight, Angel Torres, the ball carrier, gets has the ball a little bit of scoot in his step. Yeah, nice little boot action there. Yeah, some yards. misdirection after handing the ball to the fullback Absolutely, the first few yeah. plays. You, you pull that out. Third when a team is one. playing, you cover zero like, like Arvin is. All you really need offensively is that one receiver that can beat their guy. Um, but if you don't have that, then it, it's very tough to, to play against that coverage. So once again, we're third and short for the Miramonte Lions. Quarterback in the pistol. Give it right back to Hector, but the Bears defense able to stop him, and it looks like it's going to be fourth and two. 
and Cold Iron's got a tough decision right here. We talk about the field position games, and we have a Miramonte player that's down right now. Yeah, you hate to see that. We can't see a number on him right now. Yeah. But as a, as a coach, these situations, man, you, you've been consistently getting yardage yeah. to your fullback. But on the last play, you just lost a yard. So um, and, tough call here. And, and, and it's a tough call, especially with two teams that are trying to find momentum. I was at the 49er game opening weekend against the Panthers, and Kyle Shanahan was faced with a few tough fourth and shorts what is he going to do and it's at the midfield and unfortunately being a diehard Niners fan that I am the Niners failed miserably and gave great field position to the Carolina Panthers and this is the tough call right here you want to keep the drive going keep your defense fresh try to get some points on the board we looked at Miramonte this year they haven't scored a point offensively so there may be a little bit of frustration going with cold iron right now to see what he can do but you got to play that field position game right now either pin him deep or get the first down hopefully you don't you do get the first down and not you know <laughs> turn the ball over right so like you're saying this this is you know the money ball era yeah. when when everything is statted out and you know you should know your percentages it's kind of like being a good poker player you know do you do you play your hand or yeah. do you fold right here? You like the aggressive calls, but do you make an aggressive Number call in the first quarter? Being helped to the sideline. And we have number 55, James Salinas, appears to be the lion that is injured. So fourth and two, and it looks like Miramonte is going to be going for it to pay attention to the hard count possibly. Try and draw those bears off sides. In motion, there's laundry on the field. Let's see what the white hat gives it. Penalty marker on the field. And you talk about a killer. False start. False start on the Lions. It is tough. It is, you know, those little things, those little discipline yeah. things. It's always two or three plays in a game that really decide the game in most cases. Yeah. And something like that, you know, can come back to haunt you. We are in the first quarter, eight minutes, 36 seconds left. Miramonte, fourth down and about seven. Looks like they are going to be punting. Back deep for the Bears. You got Jarek Brown, number 21. And you got number 11, Carlos Narzagare. And it appears it's going to be decent punt. At the 25, it appears, for... The Bears is where they'll start offense. We do have some laundry on the field at about the 46, 47 yard line. Let's see what that is. Miramonte got a little fortunate there. Snap came in low. Punter uh, struggled a little bit to get it up, but they got a decent net at that, but it might be coming back again. Arvin's two deep guys were both 45 yards deep over there. Um, there's a decent little wind here, but I don't know if that punt's going to go 45 yards. I think yeah. I'd scoot them up a little bit. So it appears that the sideline warning on the Arvin Bears already starting in the first quarter. So maybe they're a little up for this game, want to be right in there. This is a, like we've talked about, this is an opportunity for either team to get off that snide and get that first W. And I know Edgar Mares, and I hate to say it, hasn't won a game since October of 2015, and it's been a while. I, they're anxious to get off that losing streak and get on that winning streak. Yes, they are. This is see them coming out offensively. I think they're fired up. So here come the Bears, kind of on a reverse a little bit, but the ball's fumbled on the ground, only to be picked up by number 25, Pedro Colmenero, and it loses yards. And that's exactly what Arvin doesn't want to have. So you have. A sideline warning, and then your first play on offense is fumbled, loss of five yards, second and 15. Sometimes you can be too fired up, I suppose. <laughs> your hands get a little sweaty. Oh, yeah. So here we go at the 20-yard line. Once again, doing a little bit of wing tee themselves. The ball is handed off to number oh, 11, Carlos Nargazawe, and he is gone, and he danced right there. And this is going to be to the house, six points for the Arvin Bears. Wow, that was a heck of a run off the fly sweep there. I know Coach Mars had told me that uh, Kaz was the most explosive player on their team, and here we see it the first time he touches the ball, the ability to stay in bounds there 
was crazy good. Yeah. I thought for sure he was going to get knocked out of bounds, but kept it going and showed some serious speed down the, the sideline. So what a game this has been so far for Arvid. We have a sideline warning, we have a fumble, and then the very next play, we got a 70-yard touchdown run to get it going. Just the way you drew it up. <laughs> Just the way you <laughs> drew it up, exactly. On to kick the extra point, number 23, Antonio Garcia. Well, great start for the Arvin Bears there. You couldn't ask for better. Uh, getting a touchdown on your second play of the game. Uh, we'll be interested to see how Miramonte responds. They had a decent little drive going there. But that penalty set them back. Exciting game so far, and as we've talked about, someone's got to win this game, and we're going to look at that, and, you know, this is great for Arvin if they could keep this going, and for Coach Coldiron, he's going back to the drawing board to see how we can stop number 11, Carlos Narzagaway. Hopefully I'm saying his name right, and I'm getting <laughs> it on there to go on there, so my apologies if I mess it up. I've kind of got, I'm doing okay with it, so... Yeah, that looked like it was going to be stopped for, you know, eight, nine-yard gain, yeah. but he hit that corner and, and burst it through the attempted tackle. Yeah. And once again, Miramonte's back deep, and it's kicked right down the middle. Right down the middle. So I kind of like this kicking game approach by Antonio Garcia is kick it in the corner one time, kick it dead center, keep them guessing where they're going to be at so there's no clean return. It's a huge advantage as a coach if you can keep the ball out of the opponent's best player's hands. And by putting it in the end zone or putting it in a corner in a certain spot, you really give your coverage team a, a, a good break. So Coach Coldiner has seen that Arvin is playing pretty much cover zero here. We're Interested to see if they're going to pull the trigger and try and throw on it or keep grinding. First down for Miramonte coming in the double wing again. We, it looks like we have a new runner. Hector was running the ball earlier, and it appears to be number 30 is going to be uh, Nick Wale uh, or Nick Wall. Wall. Gets about a yard, maybe two, setting up second and long. Yep. Miramonte had the one bootleg play yeah. that's yep. been their most explosive play so far. Yeah. Um, they're going to, I think, have to mix it up here because Arvin's very stout up front, and with that many guys in the box, it is tough to run the football. And like I said, I think Arvin's baiting him into throwing the ball a little bit. So see how this goes right here. Second and long. Appears to be a timeout by Cold Iron. Doesn't like what he sees. We're seeing a lot of clapping by Angel Torres right there to get the ball and get a playoff. But it's going to be a timeout for Miramonte. I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Kern High Network. Our two large financial sponsors, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, U.S. Army, have done wonders to really help get the Kern High Network going. It's just hey, we can't thank them enough for their support on everything that we do. We also have some other sponsors, Pav Solar and Communication, Premier Lighting, Tony's Pizza, Raymond's Trophies. They've all helped out along the way. But thank you to all those people that have helped get the Kern High Network going. All right, for a team that's that's young and looking to win their first game of the season, yeah. you've got to keep their confidence up. You need, you need at least a couple first downs here. Arvin gets a three and out here. This could be a tough road to hoe for the Miramonte Lions. Yeah, and, it, and especially if they keep giving a healthy dose of Norzagare. If they keep giving it to him, we saw the speed, his breakaway speed, 70-yard touchdown. Second and, nine. So second and nine for Miramonte Lions coming out in this double wing right here. Once again, ball's handed off the wall. Looks like the ball was on the ground. 
kind of a little, it's tough with kind of that zone read concept that we going on there, but Angel Torres and Wall, they really have to mesh and come together offensively in order to make that work. They do, and from that flex formation, that looked a lot like a veer. Yeah, and I think the yeah. quarterback kept it over there, but there was no room to run. This Arvin defense is stacked up near the line of scrimmage and not given an inch. So we got about third and seven, maybe. Third Let's see if, if Miramonte can pass the ball a little bit. Once again, holding on to the ball. It's a healthy dose of Angel Torres. Essentially gets maybe one or two yards. And once again, it's about fourth and five. And I think Miramonte is going to look to punt the ball away, being on their own 25. You've talked about it. Where's the balance out right here for Miramonte? We've seen run, 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 run. They eventually have to pass the ball and loosen up this Bears defense that's crowding around the line of scrimmage. And the best time to pass the ball is on the early downs. Yeah, yeah. Okay, if, if you're going to go against a team and it's third and seven and they know you're Absolutely. throwing, they're yeah. going to put their ears back and put that rush on. Yeah, it can't be first down run, second down run, third down pass. It becomes pretty predictable. And the ball is punted away. It looks like the Arvin Bears are trying to get away from it. Don't know why these guys are getting so close. The small things that drive me crazy right there is when I was in high school oh so long ago, is Peter, 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 get away from the ball. I mean, we're sprinting to the sidelines because we don't want to touch it. Possibility of something going awry. That ball takes funny bounces. And, uh, you know, you, again, I think those return guys need to scoot up a little bit so that it, they gained about eight or nine yards off the roll. You want to move those guys up and at least field the ball, even if it's a fair catch because eight and nine yards matter. Last time we saw Arvin, Carlos Norzagare took it to the house 70 yards out. I tried to get the ball back in his hands, coming double wing right here. Ball then is handed off to number 21, Jarek Brown. Same style play there. They had a fly sweep action over there, and he, he got to the edge. Looks like he got... Very close to a first down, maybe a yard short. So a good pickup on first down. Second and one is my favorite yeah, thing to call. So second and one, I don't know about you, but I'm trying to take a shot over the top because you still got a few more downs to do. And being at that 49-yard line, you have, all, you have all the options in the world. You can even go for it on fourth down, be a little aggressive call, but let's see what the Arvin Bears do. Second, yeah. second and one at the 49-yard line, double wing going in there. In motion is our speedster right here. He gets right out to the edge. Little swing pass. Bobbled a little bit by number 25, Pedro Colmenero. I think that was actually a, a lateral he threw. I think that went slightly backwards, so it's a good thing that he hauled that in. But I think Arvin definitely sees a weakness on the flanks of Miramonte and is consistently attacking that weakness every opportunity they get here. Getting chunks of yards with each play. First down. Yeah, 22 yards on a previous play. I like that little play. They actually had two guys open. I mean, the motion guy coming out there, the flats are wide open once again, dropping back. Number 16, Christopher Contreras, is able to deliver a nice little ball Contreras to Drake Brown across the middle on those crossers right there against Miramonte. When it's first down and your linebackers are thinking run and they're going to step up, you hit that crosser over there. Absolutely. Nice call by Coach Mares. And once again, second and short, you got all the options in the world right here to be able to do whatever you need to do. If I'm Coach Cordenford, you just give it to Ryan Matthews and let him do whatever he wants to do, right? Hey, we, we did that on third and long also. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> didn't matter what down it, it was. Matter, didn't matter where you were at. All right, here we go. Double wing right here. Once again under center, Christopher Contreras gets the ball. Hands the rock off to number 31, Manuel Chavez. Appears to be a first down. It's going to be right on it. And it looks like they're going to sig signal third down. I still like my options right here. Got a ton of things to do. Could be four down territory, wherever they're at. Do they trust their kicker, what to look at on there? But definitely got have some options right here. Well, my guess is they're going to go over Isai Gutierrez. He's a captain for them, most dependable yeah. lineman they've got. Yeah. If it's third and short, fourth and short, that's where I'm running the ball. I'm curious to see if they catch that edge again like they've been having some success there. Once again, kind of a buck sweep action right there, fake to the fullback. A flag is on there, probably in the area of holding that we can see right here. It looks like an illegal shift right there by the Arvin Bears is going to back them up. And once again, when you go from third and – 
third and short to third and long, your options become limited right now. But I still like the edge for the Arvin Bears. Yeah, you've got, and this is, well, they've got a good kicker that can uh, make a field goal from yeah. here. Uh, depending on how short the yardage might be, it could be four down territory after this play. But, uh, you know, they've been coming close to that illegal shift a couple yeah. times. The receiver's still moving out there when the offensive line getting set, then another guy goes in motion. So I'm sure the referees uh, warned him about it, and, and now and they we, dropped the flag. But we get why they do it, because every defensive coordinator hates shifts. They hate motions. They hate unbalanced sets. They hate trick plays. So I get why they're doing They're trying to keep the defense guessing right there. Oh, yeah. As a longtime D coordinator, that just yeah. keeps you up an extra hour or two working on all those shifts and motions. Third and long. And once again, not a bad little handoff, penalty but marker penalty field. markers are on there. And it's come from the sidelines right here. Let's see what the call is going to be. You know, each officiating crew is always slightly different. We saw the sideline warning earlier. You know, you got to false start on the Arvin false Bears. Yeah. You got to understand Offense. your officials and, you know, what they're going to allow. Right now they're calling it really tight with the guys getting yeah. down into their three-point stance and then the guy motioning. There's supposed to be a second in between. And I know every time we played a wing T team, we were yelling at the officials about that too to give us – Give us that full second so we but can. But maybe, maybe it's some anxiety on Arvin. They just scored a long touchdown. Now they're trying to get it long. Contreras gets back. Big, big pressure by number 70, Osvaldo Gutierrez, with a big sack. And it was seemed to be over from the get-go. And now Arvin, they're left wondering, do they need to punt it? Yeah, you're in this mid-range territory. It's about 50 yards, but I'm telling you, their kicker had range. Uh, in warm-ups, he had plenty of leg at 45. Yeah. So this one's about 48 coming here. And again, we saw Arvin go play action on third and long when the defense was expecting a pass. That's that's tough to convert. Fourth and 13. We have the field goal coming up right now, and it has the distance, and that is good right there. Boy, good kickers are worth their weight in gold. That's oh, absolutely. The ability to put three points on the board anytime you get to the 30-yard line is awesome. Absolutely. Now we're looking at a score. It is going to be 10-0. to And we're trying to get some replays up there for you guys right now. For Miramonte, that was a... At, at least they forced them to the field goal because they were getting eight and nine and ten yards a chunk there for a while. So forcing the field goal is somewhat a vic victory for Miramonte, but uh, they're going to need to move the ball offensively here this drive. Yeah, and I'm just curious to see if they're actually going to put the ball in the air a little bit to see how that comes into play for Cold Iron because as you, you and I have talked about, they have to start passing to loosen up that Arvin Bear defense. Yeah, that, those one-on-one -on -one matchups, you just got to find which guy. If you can get your best guy on their guy that's not as good at – that zero coverage, uh, you got to pull that trigger. There's a lot of room in the middle of the field right now if he wants to kick it right there. Miramonte shifted over to the right with their return. So they could go deep, deep corner. Now he's sliding back to the middle here. And once again, that powerful leg is coming back out. Just after a 47-yard field goal right here, kicks it out into the back of the end zone. You know, every Saturday, I'm, I'm just fortunate to get to know some coaches around Kern County, and every Saturday I have a list of about four or five coaches every morning that I talk to just to see how their game went. One of my best friends, Kerry Mills, who's the head coach at South High School, was talking to me about this Arvin Bears team, and he said, you know what, we got up big on them early, but they never quit and never gave up, and they finished the game tough. And maybe it's some of that momentum that they can carry from playing a Your team like South Bears, High, who's been good uh, the last few years and has had some success, field, where they can learn from that. And South High has some athletes, and they were hanging with that. So this is exactly what they need to get points on the board. Yeah, that's a great point. And, you know, South High has really come on here. Uh, and become a force in that league. Absolutely. So for Arvin to, to play that kind of competition early yeah. on, you know, sometimes you take your lumps, but you learn an awful lot yeah. uh, when you play really good teams. Um, if, if you're just playing teams that you know you can beat, um, you may get some Ws, but you're not going to be yeah. as good come league as you probably should be. 
139 left on the clock of the first quarter. Looks like Arvin High calling a timeout, or actually Miramonte calling a timeout, trying to figure out what they're going to do. Well, they've burned two now. Those come back, timeouts, they come back to get you. It is amazing, timeouts and uh, missed extra points. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Every time that happens, you know, it's going to get you. It's those small things that, you know, you preach. And it's not the most ideal things that, that players want to know about. It's They want the, the flash, the touchdowns, the instant plays and all that stuff. So here we go, Miramonte coming back on there, hoping to get something going right there. We have number 11, Baldovinos, Ricardo Baldovinos, that's spread out towards the Miramonte side, see if they can get start getting him involved. Botch snap, but it's actually caught by number eight. Angel Torres, brought down by David Lopez, number 55, and that is gonna be a two yard loss, second and 12 for the Miramonte Lions. When you're in that pistol and uh, you're about four yards from the center and he rockets one back and you've got all the reads that you're trying to make, sometimes that happens. And it's interesting, in the pistol, I've seen variations of snapping in the centers. And here we go, first pass of the night. Ball is on the carpet right now. It's kicking around. Appears to be recovered, on the play, recovered by Miramonte, by Miramonte lineman right here. Well, that was very fortunate. Arvin had a lot of pressure on them early in that, that pass. The quarterback really had no chance to set his feet and, and throw. And especially being a former quarterback where you have one botched snap, you start to wonder if every snap is going to be botched after that. So it makes you uncomfortable. So that timing between the center and the quarterback is oh so vital to make sure that you're comfortable because I wonder if he's thinking about, is the snap coming to me? Am I going to have enough time? Looks like Angel Torres says a little something to his wing guy. And the ball comes back around. Seems to be kind of a boot pass. Angel Torres fighting for his life. Once again is brought down in the backfield. That's number 55. David Lopez on this drive alone has two sacks. And that is definitely a huge momentum gain for the Arvin Bears. Well, again, you got a third and long with, with play action, and they're not really respecting the play action. You're going to get pressure on the quarterback, and the, it was a two-receiver route. Both guys were covered pretty well. Let me clarify. That was Pedro Colmanero in on that play on that last sack right there, number 25. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, class of 20. Well, great first quarter for the Arvin Bears. Absolutely. I know Coach Mara's motto is the bear does not quit, the bear does not die. And, uh, you know, they're showing some real signs of life. They're showing they're athletic, they're physical up front. Yep. You know, I, I really think that they've got good things waiting ahead for them this season. And once again, these Friday night lights, it's all about getting that W on there for these kids that have kind of been going through there. And it's kind of the, that pressure has got to be the team that beats that streak. And Coach Mares right here is definitely doing his job day in and day out. I think they spend every Saturday at Lorraine's and get their breakfast on. They got some hefty guys down there. I love all those guys to death, but they like get eating their Lorraine's on Saturday mornings. At least that's where I used to meet them when I coached at South High to exchange film. Miramonte, fourth and 11, gonna be kicking it deep. Once again, you got the dangerous Carlos Narzagare. I love standing next to Coach Cornford because what he does is he counts to make sure there's 11 guys on the field. I know exactly what he's doing. Never stop coaching, nor you coach. Yeah, you got to recognize that stuff. And I was also yeah. looking at he's he's moved up here to 37 yeah. yards from yeah. the snap. So I think that's good. And they've only got one returner right now. So either they're concerned about a fake or maybe they're going after a block themselves. And, you know, he really hasn't punted those high skyscraping punts that we look at. So maybe he's trying to think, if I can catch this on a line, I can have some space to wiggle around a little bit. Yeah, those those are the dream right there when you catch those low liners. Fourth and 11. Miramonte back to punt. Ball kind of wobbles a little bit. Once again, directly in Ooh. the middle of the field. Guys are blocking each other, doing all this stuff. And... 
Once again, if I'm Coach Mares, I'm talking to my players about getting away from the ball. They're a little too close for my comfort right now. One of these days, like you said, it's not a round basketball. It's a weird looking shape and they gotta make sure they take care of it. Yeah, that almost hit two different Arvin Bears on that, that particular one. And again, a, a relatively short punt yeah. that they got a decent roll out of. So the net was probably about a 30, 35 yard net on the punt that only went about 20, 22 yards in the air. Arvin Bears pick up first down on about the 49 yard line. They've scored on their two opening possessions, one a 47 yard field goal and a 70 yard touchdown run. Once again, there's our speedster. On the field. Well, we already see that Miramonte's made an adjustment yep. defensively. They've been getting hurt on the flanks, and now they are putting more guys up on the line, specifically wide, to prevent that Coleman, fly sweep. Defense. But one guy got too close to the line of scrimmage and got flagged for it. And sometimes when you make those in-game adjustments, you have to maintain your focus, hold your water, stay where you're at, just not get too anxious. And that's one thing about teaching the mental aspect of the game is, how do you teach those game-like situations in practice? You're hitting against each other the whole time and translate that out on the game day. Yeah, it doesn't matter as much yeah. what the coach knows, but how much the kids know. Yeah. First and five. Once again, the ball's had it, handed off to the battering ram, 31, Manuel Chavez. Looks like it's either no gain or very short game. It's gonna be second and five. Still very manageable, do a lot of different things like to see if Arvin can go back to that swing game or get to those edges again a little bit. You said they tried to make some adjustments on there, but i like to see if those adjustments are consistent the whole time. There are eight guys standing on the line of scrimmage yeah. right now for the Miramonte. Almost daring Arvin, I think, to throw the ball here. And I, I would think a tight end vertical here. And we're almost going cover zero right here, trying to get to the edge. Once again, it's number 21. Jarek Brown, there is laundry on the field. He gets driven out at about the four, at about, we'll call it the 39. Let's wait to see what the penalty is, usually in the spot of a hold. And that's exactly what the call will be. Looks like it's gonna be marched back 10 yards from the spot of the foul, which is the 46. So it's gonna go 46 to 46. And once again, you go to it's going to actually go to the 44. You go from second and medium to now second and long, and that just puts a lot of pressure on the offense. Yeah, being behind the chains is definitely tougher to convert. And they give the ball to Norzagare, kind of on his sally, and he gets dragged down on a big play. Yeah, they, again, they've got eight guys at the line of scrimmage. They're getting penetration up there, and there's – they made the right adjustment to stop that fly sweep. Now it's third and long, and I know Matt Akers coaches the defensive line. He was a stud D lineman at Liberty back when I was at uh, West High, and we couldn't block him then, so I know he's got some guys uh, that know how to pass rush yeah. here. Kevin Salgado in on the play, brings up Arvin third and really long, about third and 20, dropping back, and they are gonna take a shot and you're gonna go right to the guy and almost a big catch. Marker on the field, the pass incomplete. Yeah, they, uh, they ran the old wheel route versus cover three and uh, he was able to get behind the corner and I think they're gonna call pass interference on the corner over there. Miramonte had dropped on the third and long into that cover three shell and uh, Arvin didn't get the completion, yeah. but they got that pass interference call, which is just as good really. I bet these high school kids are wishing that pass interference calls like in the NFL. You get the spot foul and you get an <laughs> yeah. automatic first down that goes on there. So it gives them 15 yards and then repeat the third yeah. down. So now we're back third to where we short, were. Yeah, and so now you still have options. This could be four down territory. If I'm Arvin, I'm thinking it is four down territory. They're not covering the top receiver. Third and short. Once again, give it to your speedster. And he gets around the edge and he gets enough for a Another Arvin Bear first down. Yeah, so you saw there, there was a mess up on Miramonte's defense. They left the wide receiver totally uncovered. The Arvin quarterback didn't see it, but they were able to get to that edge because they had an extra guy. Could have been a quick touchdown, though, if, if they'd have recognized that and had the ability to just toss one out there. First down, Arvin Bears. The clock is rolling. we got 10.07 remaining in the second quarter. Again, Miramonte showing eight guys up in the line of scrimmage before Arvin even breaks the huddle. And
And the ball, once again, is handed off to number 21, Jarek Brown. Gets just a few yards, sets up second and eight. Yeah, the, this defensive adjustment has certainly made it tougher for Arvin to move the ball. You know, every, everything you do, whoever has the chalk last wins. Yeah. But being able to execute it, yeah. you know, especially if you weren't expecting it and not practicing against it, uh, you know, that's where it comes in the, in the kids being able to adjust on the fly to what you're trying to do to change things up. Miramonte made a change up. Their kids are executing it well. Yeah. We'll see what Arvin's solution to that is. But it's that chess match. They're still trying to get to that edge, that little bit of misdirection that goes on there. Once again, there's a little bit of laundry on the field, or maybe it's a timeout. Edgar Mares is heated right now. Timeout. I don't know if it's Miramonte timeout, timeout or if it's Arvin. It looks like they're giving it the white hat pointed right at Miramonte, and that is Arvin's third charge timeout. Miramonte's third. Miramonte's third charge timeout. Thank you. But you notice they changed it up a little bit. They went two receivers on one side, another receiver down here on the side, single wing, single back. Hey, they're keeping them guessing. Now when you have a 10 nothing lead, you can kind of do that, and you have the momentum going your way. Well, one of the things, again, being a defensive coordinator, yeah. you make an adjustment, but your kids now have to be able to make that adjustment versus multiple sets and yeah. when shifts and motions occur, and it, it's much tougher than you would anticipate. You can sit back in your, you know, 4-4 cover three yeah. and play oh, about yeah. every defense, but teams will pick you apart. Yeah. So That's why I love being an offensive guy rather than <laughs> a defensive guy. We get to harass you guys, and you got to figure it out. Yeah, again, it, it can be a, a nightmare. For Se you. Second and nine, 33 yards. Power line. eye formation for Arvin. And they change up it again. They look like they're going unbalanced on this right side right here. And number 25, Pedro Colmanero gets right behind that unbalanced and that power eye, those big uglies. I love that football right there, Coach Cordford. Oh, man, again, when Chuck Chamberlain was giving the ball to the oh, Cunningham yeah. kid and we couldn't stop it, yeah. and they run it over and over again. That's the most frustrating thing for a defensive coordinator. And we'll, I, I would expect we'd see that again because they got a really good push up front. And you want to have your spirits crushed. You know the play's coming, and you can't do anything about it. They keep coming right at you, right at you, right at you. Dying a slow death. Oh, man. But I love it if you're the offensive guy and you keep running that same play. You, the, the game goes, you get the game over quick, and you just pound them. I love it. Right now, we want to recognize the, the people that made this possible at the Kern High Network. Superintendent Dr. Brian Schaefer, Assistant Superintendent of Instruction Dr. Brenda Lewis, Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services and Innovative Programs Dr. Dean McGee, and the Director of School Support Services Stan Green. Thank you guys for all your support all season long. Uh, we just appreciate that. We also want to recognize the U.S. Army and Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, our Big, big financial sponsors to have really help get the Kern High Network going where it needs to go. So Henry Chavez was the offensive lineman down there. He's a senior. Um, boy, if you want to pound the rock, you hate to see those yeah. old linemen go down. And especially these teams. That, I mean, we look at both Miramonte and Arvin, and you haven't been on the winning side. You may not have as deep a teams as you possibly could on teams that are winning. So everybody matters out there and having them out there. So losing a guy like this, it's, they may not be as deep as they probably should be. But once again, we get in the power eye formation. Football that I love to see. Pedro Colmanero is in the backfield. They once again hand it off to him. He gets right behind them and it appears that he's going to have enough for a Arvin Bear first down. Again, they went with four offensive linemen essentially to the left of the yep. formation with yep. the extra fullback that way too, saying, here we come, try and stop us. And they were able to pick up the first down. And as a defensive coordinator, how do you attack that unbalanced set when it's coming out there? And you, I, There's obvious the shifts that got to take place, but what are some things that you try to teach your defense when you're going against an unbalanced team? Well, the first thing you got to do is recognize that it's yeah. unbalanced. Yep. Um, you know, the last thing you want is for one side to shift, but the other yeah. side not to shift and leave a couple gaps open. Yeah. So getting them to recognize that it's unbalanced is, is the first thing, and then to understand that your rules still apply. You might be lined up yeah. on the guard instead of the center now, yeah. but the way you play and your technique should still be the same. And don't try to be a hero. You know, yeah. don't, don't chase ghosts. Play your gap. And I like the approach. So not only are they going on balance and they have extra blockers on one side of the, you know, the center, 
They're also going full, full house backfield. So you, now you have two more blockers that you're adding to it when they've been kind of doing some wing T stuff here or there. Now they're switching the game plan up a little bit, forcing Miramonte to make those adjustments. First down for the Arvin Bears after a measure. The clock is ticking down. Eight minutes and 38 seconds left in the first half of this current high network game of the week between the Arvin Bears and Miramonte Lions. So they do have a receiver split out wide this time. Yep. But a two tight end set. Yep. Double tight. Quarterback is passing. And once again, that's number 34. Calderon, Felipe Calderon. Pretty sure he grabbed a face mask there, though. So what would have been a huge play for Miramonte Man. to back him up is now going to cost him. Coach Coldiron's got to be frustrated. You just had exactly what you wanted to have right here. But now it's going to be a face mask penalty that's going to push back the Miramonte Lions. Yeah, and Felipe Calderon is listed as the free safety over there, the emotional leader yeah. of that team, and he was making a tackle for a six- or seven-yard loss. So you know they're bringing everybody yeah. up when your free safety's tackling them that deep. They just called it a five-yarder, so that yeah. helps Inadvert Miramonte's face cause. Mask. Now they're going tight, going unbalanced once again, more than likely. They're going to actually hand it off to their speedster, like the play call right here. A lot of jersey over here, and it looks like number 25, Pedro Colmanero on the hold. Looks like it was a takedown, like a wrestling move takedown that a fullback had right there. Yeah, they they uh, ran the uh, offset back to the right, and yeah. then they, they gave it to him on a little counter sweep over there and had yeah. some room, but uh, can't break the rules. Yep. But I like this package that they have right here. I mean, they're going against their unbalanced, goes against the traditional norm, but it's a little wrinkle yeah. in what's going on there. Kind of a good play call right there. Well, the one little tell I would say if I were Miramonte yeah, is that down. fullback was wider than he normally yeah. was. And so you okay. hey, you see that, you think, hey, here, come, here comes counter. So we got first and about 20. And if we're looking at tells, you got Jarek Brown in the backfield right here on the toss sweep right here, and he's trying to find those lanes where they need to go. But a great play by Miramonte, only limiting the damage to just a few yards. Got about second and eight, second and nine. Yeah, that was Calderon again. He is flying up from his spot over there and making, making it difficult for Arvin to get outside, and that's what Miramonte needed yep. to do. Second and long is not where Arvin wants to be. But the thing that you don't want to give away the company secrets, but I'm running those toss Second sweeps, sweet pass coming in there if I have a safety flying up, vacating his spot. Ball is now handed off to number 25. That is Pedro Colmanero. And he's tackled with a pretty good gain that brings the ball back at very manageable. About third and six, third and seven for, Col for the Arvin Bears. Maybe we'll call it third and eight. And you know if you're Arvin, you're in field goal range here. Absolutely. So, so that helps. Um, From about the 40 in, you're in field goal range. It seems right there with the, with the kicker that Arvin has. He really can boot the ball. That's Antonio Garcia. Definitely has a strong leg. So here we go, third and eight for the Arvin Bears. Looks like they're going to go two receivers to the right, one receiver to the left. Their speedster looks like there's space for him, and they're trying to give him a chance. I like the play call and almost had a chance to have that on there. That was a perfect throw. That's Absolutely. right where you want to put that ball. Yeah. You just hope your receiver go up strong for that in I'd, position. See, I'd like to see him change his hands up a little bit, get it at its highest point rather than trying to cradle it down right there. And, it was almost a touchdown right here, but nonetheless, take that chance when you got a kicker like we see right here with Antonio Garcia as he comes on, and he's going to attempt right now. Looks, like It appears to be a 38-yard attempt for the Arvin Bears. The one thing is he does take a little bit slow approach. And it's snapped, and it is zipped through. All right, that one never got more than maybe 14 feet off the ground the whole time, but it, it went through. That looked like a Mickey Mantle home run right there, something <laughs> like that. So that was definitely. Seven minutes, 12 seconds remaining in the first half. It still counts as three. Yeah, absolutely. Antonio Garcia, 37-yard field goal. Yeah, I think if, if I was Miramonte, I would really work to, to try and block that thing because he does take a little long on his approach to the ball. But he sure has a good leg. Yeah. 
I mean, that was a rocket, like you said, <laughs> about four feet off the ground. <laughs> if you'd had somebody standing at the uh, goalpost, they might have been able to block it back there. All right, well, Miramonte's got to find something offensively that, that works for them. Find a way to move the ball. I know that the you know their team leader is Hector Serretta, yeah, and uh, they want to get that fullback established. But boy, Arvin has been tough up the middle. And I'd like to see Miramonte do what Arvin's been doing, mixing up the sets, mixing up the formations, doing what they need to do, and keeping them guessing a little bit. They've been very, very predictable on kind of this double wing approach that they've had. Yeah, they they have an inability to throw the ball on third and long. And here goes the kick, and it ends up going out of bounds, just out of Daniel Anthony's reach. And the Miramonte Lions will set up. Goal, I do want to give a shout out to both Arvin High School and Miramonte. Touchback. Arvin High School has been extremely generous. We came up here to this table, and we had rosters that were taped all over the table. We got an ice chest full of water, just first class operation out here. And at Arvin High School, the administration is led by Principal Ed Watts. Assistant Principal of Instruction, Brandy Ball. Assistant Principal of Administration, Robert Moore. The Activity Director, Lori Ambrose. And the guy that made it happen for us tonight, who is a great dude, goes unnoticed for the work he does, is Ralph Gonzalez, the Athletic Director. First down for the Miramonte. For Miramonte, there is motion. It appears to be number nine of Miramonte, and that is Ralph Campus, but we'll see what it is. Actually going to call offsides, and I think it was number seven, Arnie Pantoja, who is just a little too aggressive for the Arvin Bears. Yeah, Ralph Gonzalez, the athletic director, was telling me earlier that they're going to, yeah. these two teams are going to meet again. Wow. Um, yeah. This year. Uh, because of the games that got canceled, they yep. both actually had the same bye week. So I think a smart move, and I think this could be a really good rivalry because the schools aren't that far apart. And after talking with both Ralph Gonzalez and Josue Valenzuela, who's the athletic director at Miramonte, this is a new rivalry to look at. We have a bootleg action, action right here by number eight, and that is Angel Torres. And he got Angel some decent Torres yards right here, and it's going to set up second and short, only about four yards. But I do like the play call, a little misdirection, booted around a little bit. That's the second time they've been successful with that play. And, you know, the That's one thing I'd say is the receiver over here, if he'd have ran his guy off, they'd have got a lot more yards on that because the cornerback yeah. would have had to stay on him or give up a big pass play. So, And eventually they're going to have to take that those shots down the field. 13-0. Arvin Bears, 651. Miramonte has the ball on about the 30 yard line. Once again, it's Torres at quarterback. Bat, botch snap again. And I've talked about this being a former quarterback. If you can't trust your center to get you the ball where you want it every time, it's going to be tough right there. You know, that is a really underestimated aspect of offensive football yeah. because a, a center who can, can snap, I mean, it's a tough job to be yeah. that center because he's got a snap and he's got a nose guard. You know, bearing down on him, he's yeah. got to take his steps. And to be consistent is critical. If you've got a good nose yeah. guard that can punish a center and, and screw up a few snaps, yeah. that's huge. And right now at that nose guard position is Gerardo Aguilar. And here we go, Hector. We saw Hector carrying the ball earlier on in the game. That's Hector Suareta. And there was a good little formula that they had going on, handing off, and he gets Five yards, six yards right here, setting up third and fourth for the Miramonte Lions. 5.50 left in the first half. What a great game as these two teams try to get off the snide. So critical call here for Coach Coldiron here. You want to get at least into convertible fourth down range yeah. if you need to. Try to hard count. Once again, a little bit of motion. We're trying to see what it is. Could be delay of game. Actually, it's a false start that gets going on there, and that is a drive killer. Because I think it's pretty obvious, and, and I can't predict what's going on there, but there is a lack of maybe trust in the passing game. You see where they're going on right there, and I hope that they can get that figured out, and hopefully they get some completions down there. Yeah, they've had trouble with their protection on their other third and longs. They've yeah. tried to go some yeah. play action on that, and Arvin's not respecting the play action. And uh, the quarterback's had a tough time setting his feet. So I'm sure the Arvin Bears are going to pin their ears back yeah. and, and bring some heat right here. 
we'll see if uh, Miramonte can get the ball up and get, at least give themselves a chance. And if you can't get the snap, you can't get, you know, all these things start to add up. And once again, can't get the snap. And the Bears are able to swarm all over that on a botched snap. Fourth and long, five minutes are going. Still a two possession game. And football adage, I just kind of look at it and say on there, I only get comfortable if it's a four possession game. Because I think a four possession game, statistics have shown that it's been way out of range, that there's almost impossible to come back off that, except if you're the Oilers against the Bills and you have Frank Wright coming in there and scoring a touchdown. But I always try to get that four possession game. It's still a lot can happen in a two and a three possession game. I was going to say, unless you're the Texas A&M Aggies, oh, man. rub Absolutely. a little salt in their wounds. Being a Baylor Bear myself, <laughs> uh, I like to see that yeah. go down. And the punt is off. And he's going to take a chance. Why not? And he has got some running room right there. Puts his head down, and that is Jarek Brown that is able to do a great thing for the Arvin Bears because they go from being in their territory, and now it's in Miramonte territory, Ball will be placed at the 45-yard line. Four minutes and 32 seconds left. Arvin Bears, I, I know they have a kicker to get on there. But touchdowns are so important. You know, put the game out of reach a little bit for them in the first half. See if they can make this a three-possession ball game because a field goal only right here is still a two-possession ball game. First down, Christopher Contreras gets in the gun a little bit. Has Dariq Brown in motion, does a little toss sweep right there. Getting nowhere. Looks like it's going to be a block on the back. You have talked about number 34, Felipe Calderon, is just causing a lot of havoc in that backfield as he was blocked in the back. Yeah, he keeps playing hard, and uh, that's what David Coldiron expects from him. Again, they said he's their emotional leader, and you lead leadership starts with performance. Yeah, uh, You cannot be a leader if you can't perform out there. Yeah. And uh, he's doing a great job defensively. You know, I don't want to say single-handedly because I'm sure it's part yeah. of the scheme. Yeah. But uh, he is he is causing Arvin fits. I want to give a shout out to our camera guy, Julian Wilson, has done a phenomenal job. Uh, just joining us this year for the first time, he's doing some volleyball for us, doing a lot of great things. Keep up the good work, Holding Julian. You're doing a great job, bud. Offense. I wouldn't be surprised if Arvin went to that little swing class they used earlier to Jarek Brown or uh, one of their other explosive players because they've, they've got multiple weapons. I think it's going to go to Nor Norzagare. They're going to somehow give him the ball because he is their difference maker. And what do they do right out there? They swing it right out in kind of a backwards lateral, and he's doing a little bit of jigger, jitterbug. But it seems when they need a big play, they're going to their speedster right Norza Garai, I just heard the guy say it on there. So hopefully I get Norza Garai right. The His shoe does come off. It looks I'm like wondering. a cramp. It could be a cramp, could be an ankle, could be something. But he took that off quickly. And I know Coach Mares looks like he's going to call a timeout right here. Maybe give his player some time. But he is on the ground right now. It looks like the trainer's going over there to see what's going on. Well, you got to admire wow. the adjustments that Coach Coldiron has yeah. made defensively yeah. because they were getting gashed early on to the outside. Yeah. They've made some tweaks and, and uh, made some big plays in the backfield, uh, and they've got Arvin in another third and long. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, class of 2020 selling pizza. What a great Arvin game. The weather is perfect. Potatoes. Arvin Bear Being the northern league Charlie guys Bills. that we are <laughs> on the central coast over there, this is our type of weather all the time. Not used to this 100 degree, 100 plus degree weather going on here, but it is absolutely beautiful tonight. Can't ask for a better night for good football. Love seeing the Arvin JROTC running down there, showing good school spirit and support, taking pride in their community. We have the little tiny Arvin children out here that are future cheerleaders. It's great, great atmosphere going on here tonight at Arvin High School. Third and long, third and 15. 
Jarek Brown not even looking, waiting on kind of that wheel route that's going out of the backfield, almost kind of an arrow. And this is a tough decision right here because they're right on the 50. What they're going to do. Well, it is fourth and 15, so I don't think it's quite as tough as yeah, you were thinking. Yeah, it may not be as tough, but if you have some momentum going somewhere, you know, I don't know. Yeah, what I'm thinking right here yeah. is I'm going to punt the ball, and then I'm going to burn my timeouts yeah. on defense and yeah. then hopefully get the ball back here yeah. instead of giving them an opportunity to have the ball at the 50 and potentially put points on the board. And it looks like that's what Coach Mars is going to do too. Great call, great call. Pin them deep. They haven't had a really good punt scheme going on right here as well. So back to punt for the Arvin Bears is Angel Garza. Let's see what he's Number able to do with the ball right now. Oh, they hit the guy on the sideline. they hit it on a fake. And what we see right here. So that's that's a great call by Coach Mara's. Absolutely. And uh, what you do there is you just have the one guy come off the field a little slower than everybody else, stop and line up as a receiver about two yards from the sideline. I couldn't see it from here because it kind of blends in with the uh, the sidelines over there, and they caught him. So Coach Mara is going all gas pedal right here, no brakes, uh, pulling out the stops to try and get this win for the Arvin Bears. Well executed play. Absolutely, and... <laughs> Fake punt, 35 yards on the play, getting on there. Do you think he wants this win as you brought up? Contreras under center again. Once again, give it to the playmaker, see what he can do. Makes a guy miss, makes another guy miss, and it looks like the lines are piling up on him. Norzagarai, we have seen have some speed. It looks like his ankle's okay right now. Yeah, we have another guy cramping. It's funny, and this happens every year. Yeah. As soon as the weather cools down, you get more cramps because kids stop thinking about drinking all the water that they yeah. need. Um, we were always on our guys about, hey, you got to drink even more now because yeah. you, you don't think about it. Yeah, I really like the combination of nose guy and uh Jarek brown they uh you know they give arvin really the chance to go both you know ways you can't overload one side because you know you got one extra special back they got two guys that can do that uh that are ultra explosive guys out here and you know it, an offense that can at least run the ball in a balanced fashion is, is tough to defend we'll see if they can throw the ball a, a little bit. Um, they've, they've struggled with that a little bit, but that, that last pass they had thrown in the end zone at the end of the last drive was a good ball. Just got to, receivers got to come down with it. Some early scores, it looks like the Highland Scots are up on the blades in our other game of the week, seven to nothing right now. And it looks right now that the Frontier Titans up 14 to seven for their homecoming. And it seems like with 33 seconds left in the first half, Centennial is up over Bullard, 13 to six, or actually Bullard up on Centennial, 13 to six. We'll kind of get that figured out what's going on right there, but definitely a lot, of, actually Bullard is up over Centennial, 13 to six. A lot of other scores coming up a little bit later on. Back in the power eye set here. You got two minutes, 45 seconds Second left in the half. And right up the gut for a touchdown for the Arvin Bears. And you touchdown. just called it right in that power eye set. You can see. Well, and it all goes back to that fake punt by Coach Mara. You know, just a great call, a fourth and 15. Who's thinking fake punt on fourth and 15? But that particular fake punt is a, such an explosive play. You know if it's completed, yeah. you're going to get at least 20 yards on it. So the perfect call at the right time by Coach Mares. And, again, hats off to a guy that is as loyal to Arvin as you can get in a, in a, in a town that is loyal to him. You know, uh, in the last 49 years, they've had two coaches here in this town, Chuck Chamberlain and Edgar Mares, and, uh, you know, two great guys. We talked, you know, that the one downfall of Antonio Garcia is he takes a little long, and uh, Miramonte was able to get a block on on that particular kick. So I think they they saw it too, and realized they could uh, give him. That's that's a big play for them. Again, you know, you want to shift the momentum back, and that's a good start. Up here we got Jose Valenzuela, athletic director of Miramonte. 
come to say hi to us. But like as we've talked about, one thing I'll say about Miramonte is they're trying to make those adjustments and see what's going on right there. You've talked about it twice already. They're slow on the kick. What do they do? They block it. That could be a momentum momentum shift. And we see that it's 19 nothing right here. Miramonte could turn around and do the same thing in the second half. So, you know, I'm curious to see how both teams respond, what things are set at halftime. We have two minutes and 37 seconds left. What are you telling your Miramonte Lions over there as they get ready to go out on offense right now, being a defensive guy that you are? What am I going to tell them yeah, on offense, yeah. being the defensive guy that <laughs> yeah, I am? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, you know, 237, you don't have yeah. any timeouts. You don't want to give Arvin the ball back. You'd yeah. love to establish something, though. Yeah. Arvin might end up playing a little softer, maybe a little bit of a prevent look, and so you can yeah. get some ground game. But you want to try and go in with some momentum. If you could at least get a couple first downs, that yeah. could give you that momentum. That's what I'd be thinking there. And the ball is off. And it's actually very playable for the Miramonte Lions and the quarterback Angel gets out there and he's kind of running around he's finding a little bit of room right there and it's a tackle by the kicker Antonio Garcia so how often do you say the quarterback returns it and the kicker tackles him not too often you get to have that right there not too often that's a good little again a Looking for sparks for Miramonte, getting yeah. the ball at decent yeah. field position. Absolutely. Uh, you know, if, if Arvin continues to play cover zero on these first and second downs, you potentially could get the big play if you can get yeah. the pass off. And I think both teams are faced with that kind of conundrum is they, they're the loading the box. Let's see if we can go over the top. Easier said than done, though. Because oh, you you got to pass protect it, too. And if they've got five, six, seven guys coming. And you got to have a Brandon Smith at receiver and an A.J. Jefferson at receiver, huh, coach? Those guys made me a whole <laughs> lot smarter than I actually am. First down for Miramonte that we have right here. Arvin is in a cover zero that they got everybody within six yards of the line of scrimmage. And a nice little run. It's our boy Hector that they gave a healthy dose of that. And he's been averaging about four or five yards a pop. So if they keep that kind of going and maybe take something over the top, loosen it up a little bit, that'd be good. Yeah, if you can you, you establish that running game and then yeah. you pull the ball and throw a quick one over there again. When the safeties are at six yards, it's not – they take one step forward, you can get behind them. And, you know, we're kind of looking at this from our vantage point of coming on here this first week and all this stuff. But Coach Coldiron knows his personnel, knows what they have out there, knows what we're – you know, we're just these broadcasters up at the top. So he, I, I think he can kind of see that too. It looks like number 58, that's Good Yvonne game. Torres, is offside. But we'll see what they're going to call right now, if it's going to be a false start or if it's going to be offside. The other thing is, with everybody up that tight, if your fullback can just get a little bit of space with some yeah. momentum and break a tackle, then he's off to the races. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, it's just a, it's a high-risk, high-reward defense for Arvin, and it's obviously certainly worked for him. Encroachment. Um, defense. Encroachment. Five-yard penalty. By the Arvin Bears. Still second down. Gets it second and short. Now, if you're going to take your shot, here's the time to do it. They're all up tight. Absolutely. But you got to have a guy win a one-on-one matchup. And once again, a healthy dose of Hector running the ball hard for the Miramonte Lions. I like that approach. I like how he runs the ball. 5'10", 210 pounds, almost like tackling a bowling ball over there. A great leg drive on that to get the extra yards. Again, he is the team leader. He is the guy that they depend on, and, and his heart and emotion leads them over here. And, uh, again, leadership starts with performance. And this time, though, for Hector, that play, broke it off. One backfield. yard loss to go on there. I'm going to tell you once again, as a quarterback, I, I'm just watching the snap game that's going on there. I'm seeing balls rocketed right in the gut. I'm seeing balls that are going up high. I'm seeing make your, and I'm a quarterback. I know it's all about us, right? You know, but you got to make that quarterback, the guy that's handling the ball, comfortable back there. And hopefully that communication between him and the center is going on a, Hey, slow the ball down a little bit. That's what I'd probably do because he's probably pressing and really snapping it back there. So just kind of curious to see the approach, the conversations that are happening between that because it all starts with that exchange, especially if you're going to be in the pistol like that. Yeah. 
you know, and it's something you work on, you work on, you work on, but game situations when the adrenaline is pumping a little bit and that guy yeah. knows he's got to drive block and step fast, it's, you know, easier said than done. And then also yeah. just, just catching that snap from that close, uh, you yeah. know, you got to have a good athlete back there. And, again, there's a million things you can do to try and soften the snap yeah. and that. Um, but you, you need to have consistency there or your offense is going to struggle. Pedro Colmanero is the bearer that's down right now. He's the one that just had the touchdown in the power eye. He's his power back. He's kind of their linebacker, and I could tell when you're a linebacker running back type that's going both ways and playing that he is, he's probably one of their toughest kids that he has out there. So he needs to make sure that he's okay, he's in the game, he's healthy, he's safe, all of that. But he's a very important piece. We got second and 11. Back under center is Angel Torres. Clapping for the ball. Gets it once again. It's kind of an awkward snap right in his gut, dancing for his life. And it looks like there's bears that are all over. And it looks like he's going to get back to the original line of scrimmage. And it's going to be third and 11 for the Miramonte Lions. Without timeouts, that clock is ticking. And Arvin is now playing that shell defense, going to play some prevent here for the first time in the game. And you really. talked about those timeouts early on. They come back to get you. And at a decent drive they have right here, they have it. Torres drops back, scrambling around, on the run a little bit. Good little pass to the edge. I do like that. And a great job getting out of bounds. Absolutely. And is it going to be fourth down right here? It's going to be close with nine seconds left. The clock is ticking down. So one thing you can do here with nine seconds left, because the clock will stop on a first down, yeah. is you could run it here, then spike it after that, and then go for the home run ball. And that, yeah. that's probably what I would do instead of just going straight for yeah. the home run ball right now, is I, I would run it for the first down. Or do you take a chance at two home run balls? Because I've seen that approach sometimes where they go on there. At least give two options. And another botch snap on the ground pushes him back 10 yards. And that's going to run it out for the Miramonte Lions, it seems to be. The clock should be going. And the clock is stopped, but it should be going. And it appears yeah. it's going to be halftime right now. But there seems to be a miss. It, at. it seems like, I mean, that was fourth down, so the ball should be dead. I don't know why they actually yeah, won the clock. It down. should have been Arvin's ball right there at, at midfield. And I think Coach Mares is going to go talk about that. Score, if the ball's chopped down, it should be their ball. Hey, Coach Marge is a good coach. He, you yeah. know, he's got a 19-point lead, but, hey, no lead is safe here. Yeah. He wants every opportunity he can. He knows he's got some explosive players out here. I do not understand why that clock was, was, yeah, and was running. Yeah, and that's my mistake looking on here. I thought it should be running out, but now as I think about it, there should be 2.8 seconds left on the clock because it was a fourth down that went back, and it was kneeled down, so there should be time left on this clock. The yeah. officials are going to get together. They're going to look at it, maybe talk about it. As soon as the, those knees hit the ground, that play was dead. And there was actually about five seconds left yeah. on it. And it continued to roll. To, the clock stopped at 2.8. And then the officials rolled it. Looks like they're going to get them to halftime right now. I wonder if Coach Mars is satisfied with the explanation he got. Cause, um, Would you be? No. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would not be. I would not be satisfied with that either. And he's still talking it out right here, seeing what's going on. And he wants these guys to have a conversation. Remember, we got to do what's right for the game and what's right for the kids. I think that is a botched call right there by the officials. This is a good crew. This is yeah. a veteran crew. Yeah. They know what they're doing. But I, I'd love to hear the explanation myself. Absolutely. We're actually going to go ahead and uh, take a little bit of a break, take about a five, six-minute six minute break as we go and recognize our sponsors, and we'll come back and have some thoughts on the first half. We're live on the Kern High Network at kernhighnetwork.com. We'll be back in just a second. Every team trains hard. Every team prepares to win. But when U.S. Army soldiers take the field, it's best if the other guys don't bother showing up. See if you have what it takes at GoArmy.com slash team. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. 
I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. As a millennial, for me it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do everything online or through an ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. That's why we're the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our low mortgage rates, including 60-day rate lock and no cost to you. Purchase or refinance your home today. Kern Schools, together we have something special. This is where we're going to train the kids to actually get jobs in the industry. We're going to give them the basic tools that they need, also the skills that they need to understand where they fit into the industry. All the animated things, because we have everything that we need in the scenes. They are learning the principles of animation, Photoshop, they're learning how to animate in 2D and 3D. And when you swap to that shape, then you're just going to drag these over here. The storyboard aspect of creating basically the skeleton of the story and then just sort of directing people on my vision of what I want in the story. And it's also giving me the advantage of Mr. Pollard since he's worked at so many companies, being able to put it in my resume and be like, this is the art direction I've received. We're learning a lot about how mobile apps are made, uh, the programming and coding that goes into it, uh, along with the time and effort. Along with that is also uh, the entrepreneurship of the class, learning how to run our own business. We're also learning basic marketing skills, people skills, graphic design, and social media marketing so that they can freelance, they can work on their own, they can apply for a job, they can go to BC or Cal State or any other university who offers programs that are specific within the mobile app development concentration or business concentration. With my future and career, I do plan on being somewhat of an entrepreneur, owning my own business, sort of a clothing brand line. And so this will definitely help me out with possibly an app for my company and uh, the entrepreneur part, helping me be able to run my business smoothly uh, as I can make it go. different roles, what a game designer is, what they do, and how video games are made, and how to deconstruct them. We're also going to be teaching the hard skills, which includes learning the Unreal Engine. And what the Unreal Engine is, is it's a game development tool that students will be able to use to make their very own video games. And this is something that actually industry professionals use every day to make uh, some of the top selling games. They're all the same size. You're all on the same plane. There's no undulating terrain or anything like that. Our instructor, he's really amazing. He encourages everybody. He's really fun and he makes learning fun. So they've got top of the line computers here and they're set up to excel. I would be surprised if other students their age coming out of high school would have anywhere near the level of expertise that these guys are going to have. Welcome back everyone to Barley Field in Arvin High School and it's fixed on there and we got the Arvinite cheerleaders with some of the youth Golden Empire cheerleaders of Arvin High School. We're going to see the band that's coming out right now. Coach Cornford, what are some of your thoughts on the first half of this game? Uh, well, very impressed with the Arvin Bears, both offensively and defensively. They've got a sound game plan. Uh, penalties have hurt them here or there, but Coach Mars, I think, has called a masterful game, both offensively, defensively, and in special teams. Uh, you know, these. You know, he, he's a really good coach. He's been around a while. His staff has been a while, around a while. They've worked really hard. Uh, you know, on this, and it's certainly paid off for him. So if you're Miramonte, what's your game plan in the second half? Boy, the hard part for Miramonte, who's, who struggled all year to move the football, uh, you know, they just, it's like a baseball team hitting singles. Yeah. It's, it's very tough to score that way without, you know, the three-run homer. 
every now and then. And yeah. they, they just don't seem to quite have that ability to hit the home run. Their quarterback has shown some flashes and made made some decent plays. They've, you know, had three and four yard gains, yeah. but boy, it, it's just tough to move all the way down the field with just three and four yard gains all the time because you either get a penalty or somebody misses one assignment and now you're second and ten and you can't get it. And we and we've talked about those small things. So you you mentioned, you know, effective use of timeouts you know we've looked at that a lot of time two timeouts were used in the first quarter and then early in the second quarter we see Miramonte use a third one and then we see they have a drive at the very end of the half to try to get some points on the board and it gets stalled because they have no timeouts that's going on there other little small things that we talked about that could bite some teams to get them to the next level where they need to be is the slow field goal, the PATs that we talked about with the Arvin. It's a little thing, but yeah. it's a thing that they need to expedite it. I've talked about all night being a whining quarterback that I am, you know, all night about you that exchange the in the pistol of making sure that it is just, you know, firm. If I'm a quarterback, I may even take a step back. I mean, we're down 19 nothing. Take a step back, slow that ball down, because that seems to be zipping in there, but it's all at different angles, and that's just a comfort thing. Is that an after practice thing? Is that a before practice thing? Is it a both before practice and after practice thing? Because to me, chemistry between the center and quarterback is essential. Well, I think you just hit the nail on yeah. the head, and that's probably the biggest factor yeah. offensively uh, for Miramonte. When they're getting the three, the four yards, but then one bad snap and you lose two yards uh, is critical. And we've seen how many bad snaps? Six, yeah. seven? Uh, and, and other snaps that are just coming hard. And, you know, I know Ridgeview had been a pistol team. They went yeah. under center because they didn't feel comfortable with the guy that could pistol snap it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that, you, you, I don't, you know, it, but it, boy, it changes everything if you go under center from, yeah. from your philosophy. So I think what you said, maybe having the quarterback just get a yard deeper gives them a little bit more time to feel that that uh, snap. And sometimes as a quarterback, I catch myself, okay, if the ball's consistently going right, maybe you get a ball deeper, you take a step to the right so you know where you're going, where the ball's at. It's just finding those little nuances to make sure your team's successful because even if the quarterback still catches the ball and it's off kiltered somewhere, it slows the whole timing of the play, especially we've seen with Miramonte as they have these motion guys going in there because they have a motion guy for a reason. There's probably a fake that's coming somewhere, and if you don't have the fake, the defense could set back and do whatever they want to do because they know the ball's not going to him, so things like of that nature. Right. You ideally want those mesh points to be very yeah. tight. Yeah. The looser they are, the easier it is for the defense to diagnose who has the ball over there. And uh, you, Like you said, if, if your timing is off, a quarter of a second that is a huge difference you know it's that drill work that often we gets talked about and kids hate drill work you know and it but it's so vital and so important i remember watching peyton manning talk with the university of tennessee coaching staff after he had retired and he was talking to him about what's important he's like drill work every single day and he showed film of him at tennessee doing a drill him at Indianapolis doing the same drill, him at Denver doing the same drill. Drill work was important for him and his timing and his mess. And we're talking about the greatest quarterback of all time to look at it, but I think that's the example that these kids need to look at the behind the scene things. They don't just all of a sudden wake up and it's easy. There's drill work that goes into that. So. Right, you know, some people I think think that all you're doing for your two and a half hour practice is running plays. You're breaking down each individual aspect of that play with each individual position and getting those kids to understand the footwork and the timing and uh, the pad level, you know, and every position has got to be in sync and it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Sometimes if you've got a superior athlete, you can get away with, you know, being a little bit sloppy sometimes. But boy, if you don't have that, you have got to be on point. And every level you go up, there's more and more superior athletes. So if kids can learn in the high school game to really shore up some of those skills and all that stuff, if they get to the next level or when they get to the next level, they're that much more prepared. We have about a minute and 40 seconds left of halftime at Barley Stadium in what Vance Palm calls God's country in Arvin, California. It definitely has been a... It definitely has been a great atmosphere, fun, festive, uh, exciting time for Arvin High School. Pack stands, that's good to see. 
Yeah, you got to appreciate the community that's going to be behind their team. And, boy, you know, just if Arvin can pull this out, yeah. I, I think it's going to be the, the first step in some really good things. And yeah. that is a lot of fun to be a part of. I know when I was both at Wasco and we turned things around and then at West and we turned things around, Classic the way the school yeah. just picks up and the guys start wearing their Letterman's jackets and the yeah. pride factor. Oh, yeah. um, you know, football can do some great things for a school uh, in, the, in the pride area. Well, it, you know, I've often talked about it at the various schools that I've been out is establishing a solid football program because when the football pre program goes right, it just seems – it sets the tone, it sets the mood for the rest of the school year and all that. I've often heard throughout education circles and all this stuff, the two most, most important positions on a campus is the principal and the football coach. So there's something about getting the, the culture and the atmosphere here. Well, I got to meet Principal Ed Watts here before yeah. the game yeah. for the first time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just very impressed with his support of Coach Mara's. Yeah. And his understanding that Coach Mars is working his tail off for this town and has been. You know, he played high school football for Chuck Chamberlain, took over for Chuck Chamberlain. Uh, you know, has been coaching now for 18 years as the head coach, 27 years yeah. in the program. I mean, you got a guy that's as loyal as possible. It's nice to see that the administration is loyal to him and really give him a chance to work through tough times. Yeah, absolutely. Once again, we are live streaming on the Kern High Network at kernhighnetwork.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union and the U.S. Army have done so much. Did you know, Coach Cornford, that the U.S. Army is coming out to schools for the game of the week doing push-up contests to see who can do the most? It's a great thing, both guys and girls. So they've done a really good job with that. We also have Pab Solar and Communication, Premier Lighting, Tony's Pizza, Raymond's Trophies have all kicked in the last couple years as we've really gotten this going. Make sure you follow all our highlights and replays on Twitter at KHSD Athletics. And those tweets then get kicked to Facebook, which is the Kern High Network. So make sure you pay attention to that as well. We got about two minutes as the teams are warming up because there's that three minute kind of marking off the time and all that stuff. The Arvin Bears haven't gone out there. And you know what? I think Edgar Mares is motivating them. And the only reason I say this is he's reminding them about last year. Last year they lost at a last in the waning minutes to Foothill High School 31 to 30 and Foothill came all the way back and I think Edgar Mares is reminding him we are not done. There is still tons of football left and he's saying if we can score 19, guess what Miramonte can do is score 19. Yeah, you're exactly right. And I never quite figured out why they go to 12 minutes down to zero and then they put three minutes on. I, you know, you could just put 15 on there. And I know sometimes as a coach you get a little frustrated with, well, how much time is actually left in my, you know, halftime adjustments <laughs> over there. Miramonte's out here moving around. We just had the scoreboard go blank as the Arvin Bears take the field. Yeah. And we're getting ready for the third quarter. So I think Arvin's going to get the ball first here in the second half. We've seen them both initially take the ball wide with success. Miramonte adjusted, and then Arvin hopped in their power eye and started going right at them with success. So, again, the, the chess match that we're seeing between these two head coaches has been pretty fascinating over here. Uh, you know, the one thing Coach Coldiron has to do is find, find a way for his offense to get, uh, get rolling here. Um, and, you know, field position can play a big part on that. If he can get a, a good field position after they kick the ball off here and de a defensive stand, that, that will help them. And, and, I, and I'm curious because we've seen a little bit here or there. You know, I, I was impressed with Angel Torres for Miramonte. He seemed to be a quarterback position, have some, you know, some moves here or there. But I want to see what playmaker is going to step up for Miramonte because we really haven't seen that quite yet to see what they can do. We did get a hel healthy dose of Hector Suareta, but I like him as kind of that just power back. They get you those yards, but every now and again, you need a guy that can take it over the top and stretch that defense out, especially as you have talked about all night. Arvin High is going to stack the box. You know, what are they going to do to go over the top of that? Well, it, you know, it's not all on the quarterback there either. The, the yeah. Miramonte offensive line has got to give him time. And the, the backs in the backfield, I know they had a, a rollout pass earlier that they yeah. ended up uh, getting sacked on that was just one block away by a back 
from giving that quarterback the edge yeah. and giving him time to, to make his reads in, in his play there. So, All right, um, here we go for a big, big half for the Arvin Bears as they try to get that first win since October of 2015. Back to return is Arnie Pantoa. And off to kick, Miramonte goes right there, and the ball has some air, and it lands to Guy. I don't think they want to have touched the ball. The guy has been causing him fits all night. I mean, he gets the edge and a big block by Brown, but some tough yards for Nar Zagare. Norzagaray. I'm going to get that one of these. Norzagaray. All right, I got to write that down phonetically so I get it right on there. First down for the, uh, for the Bears. So, for Miramonte, you get interesting to see what Arvin does. Arvin comes out, Miramonte's not quite set defensively here, rushing to the line. They've got a receiver uncovered here at the bottom. If the quarterback sees it, we got There's six no, points. And it looks like he picks him up at the last minute, but they go all verticals, and Norzagaray. The pass complete to number 11. All right, good call there by uh, Edgar Mares again, catching... Miramonte, uh, you know, in a, in a set that they weren't prepared for. Um, Miramonte a little confused coming out of halftime. Again, Arvin keeping his, the foot on the gas as they continue to attack here. And interesting, as you talked about, come out in the set they're not used to. Now they're going double wing, and it looks like they start a little early. Mishandling of the ball, and it seems that Brown's jumping all over it. Actually, it's a lineman that gets on it. But you talk about the Bears, they come out, and they're going all vertical right there on the first play of the third. Like I said, what does Edgar Mares have to lose on this? He's trying to get their team in W any way possible. But mishandled at the snap right here, puts him back second, yeah, second and ten. We talked about timing for about half of the halftime yeah. break over there, and uh, Miramonte disrupted the timing there, got some penetration inside, forced that fumble. Once again, they're coming out three by one right here under shotgun. And it looks like they're doing a vertical game to see if they can get up the field. Well, there's Nozigarai right there. He was Nose open. Quarterback made a good throw, and he just didn't come down with it. He was open in the middle of the field for an explosive play, but yeah. brings up third and 15. And, and if Arvin wins this game, it's a huge momentum thing. But to get to that next level to be consistently good, they got to be consistent on the field. And there's just been a few things here or there that showed a little bit of inconsistency that if they can clean up, easy fixes, they can get it. Third and 17 for the Bears. Contreras under center, again, for the Bears. Drops back, and he's trying to find some openings. Number 83. Looks like Jonah Lopez gets his first catch of the night, but there's a penalty marker. Looks to be a hold or something on there. Holding. All right, if I'm Miramonte, I think I decline this because I want the fourth down, I want the punt. Arvin's got enough explosive guys that uh, they could convert a, a third and long. So, But, you know, at a field position-wise, yeah, you're was, talking about a 15-yard difference Yeah, I was just going to say, if I'm Miramonte, I want the ball as close as I can to the end zone when I can get it. But let's see where Cold Iron goes on this. Um, Did we get this wrong? Was it a? I think they declined it. Okay, they did it decline it. Okay, I, I was a little confused there with what was happening too, but he did decide to no, decline it. Um, bring up fourth down. Angel Garza back to punt for the Bears, fourth and 11. And I'll say this, Miramonte now has to think about the vertical game that Arvin just showed him. A lot of different variations that Edgar Mars has tried to do to keep him guessing. All right, almost looked like Edgar was going to run that fake punt again. Guy came on late. He's supposed to go inside the numbers first, so technically that was an illegal formation there. Garza with a beautiful punt, and I'm going to see where they down it right there. It looks to be a touchback. But that was very, very close to bouncing over the one right there. I like that approach on the punt. Get it in the corner away from the lines. First down, Miramonte on the 20. And as we've talked about, let's see Miramonte get them going. They have some things here or there. My thinking is they're going to give it to 
Hector Suareta. He's been running the ball hard, but eventually they're going to have to take their shots down the field. Yeah, you got it. They've been running a lot of that, uh, what we would call the flex bone. Yeah. Uh, and if you can fake it to the fullback and hit one of those wingbacks on a vertical, uh, you got a chance for a big explosive play. Eventually, I think they need to at least attempt that. Once again, in the double wing right here. See if Miramonte could get something going on first down. A little bit of motion, a little bit of confusion. Is it a delay of game? And it's actually going to be a false start, it looks start. like, on that left side. Offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Yeah, boy, rough way to start the, the drive here. You're opening, you got to stop on defense. You got the ball back. You don't have great field position, yeah. but you do have the ball. And only a minute and a half went off basically uh, in, the, in the drive there. And now you're starting behind the chains. Oh, they called it on Arvin here. Correction. Encroachment defense. There was a wow. guy that had flinched earlier, but that wasn't when the flag came out. Maybe he couldn't find it in his pocket. Um, just getting an update right now. Shamanad is up over BHS 36 to 7. What a tough stretch that BHS has to Five go through right now. Both BHS and Liberty are playing, running the gauntlet with the teams that they're playing in the preseason. It looks like in the fourth quarter, the Highland Scots are up 8 to nothing against the East High Blades. Mike Gonzalez has done a really good job with that Highland program. There's a look, a veer look here by Miramonte, good for what looks like a first down. So these are some little things that Miramonte can do right now. If they can keep this going, that'd be great. The clock yeah. is ticking, 10 minutes left in the third quarter. Let's see if Miramonte can continue to get some first downs. But eventually, like we've talked about all night, a big play, big explosive play needs to take place. And we have another bad snap. Talked about it all night, the timing issues that go on there. And one of these days, that ball's going to be on the ground. It's going to be a scoop and score, especially if Arvin Bears are loading up the box. Second down Number and about 20, 15. Andrew, it's Andrew the old Mendez two steps three. forward, two steps back. You you know, you're just killing yourself with the, yeah. those, those snaps have been just critical. Second and so, I mean, this is not where they want to be. Second and 14, they've struggled to pass protect in these long yardage situations. Yeah. They don't appear to be able to get more than five or six yards at a time running the ball. So here goes Angel Torres rolling out to the left. As he's trying to make some plays happen right here, he's kind of all over the place, kind of being a little bit shifty, just being an athlete. And he gets swarmed by a bunch of bears right there, and they're eventually going to blow – blow the play dead. There's some pushing that's going on right here. Number eight, Angel Torres. And some guys are right in the middle right here. And there's flags going all over the place where guys are trying to keep them off the field. Doing a good job. This is an ugly scene. And we're going to get away from it right now as things are kind of getting out of hand. But ugly scene taking place right now. And no coaches want to see that. Helmet's coming off. Yeah, you, you're talking about guys losing. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're definitely going to get some guys kicked out of this game. And then you're going to lose them for the next game, if not longer than that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's tough as a player to not retaliate when somebody is attacking yeah. you. But you throw a punch, whether you're the first one or second one, you're gone for the rest of this game and the next one. And they're going to try and iron out what's going on. Last thing anyone wants to see is poor sportsmanship. But for Arvin and Miramonte's sake as they're going on there, both teams are anxious to get get wins. Right, and, and 
you know, you, you're not going to back down from yeah. anybody. But you've really got to understand that team first mentality that, uh, you know, maybe somebody did hit you later, yeah. or, but you cannot afford, you can't hurt your team by not being there for them. And I think there, we might have some guys on both sides that won't be there for their team next week. So it looks like Jarek Brown was in the middle of a lot of that, and he may be out. And he was a tough weapon that was getting them going where they need to go. But these are the things sometimes when, you know, you hate to say it, sometimes teams may not know how to win, you know, the, you know, the way that they can't see the bigger picture. They're focused on the now. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I mean, you know, knowing how to win, knowing how to realize that this isn't a battle that we want to have. We do see ejections. It looks like on both sides that we have ejections, and we'll see what those numbers are if we can get them. Well, te teachable moment uh, over here, you know, and, and these kids are fighting and battling off. They don't want to take a, you know, a step backwards in, in retreat, yeah. and uh, you get all that testosterone flowing. Uh, I know Jarek Brown is standing down there with his helmet off. I know he was... In it again, I have no idea who was the instigator and, and yeah. stuff like that, but I know he was pretty fired up about whatever Something. went on in there. Yeah. He's a heck of a football player, you know, you hate to lose him. And like you said, it's you were talking about two steps forward and then two steps backwards, you know. Yeah, I know Arvin has Taft next week, um, you know, and they're going to want. All their guys, they, they, they can to – Taft's a that very game. beatable team, you know, to look at. That They've been kind of down a little bit, so they got to rally the troops. You think you're being a good teammate by getting in there and fighting and scrapping, but you're actually hurting your team and penalty yards that add up. You know, football gives you a chance to hit yeah. people legally. Yeah. And that's how you have to understand this, that, that hey, we'll, we'll take it to you on the field. Um between the whistles, you know, but not after the whistle. And and if you can teach your kids that mentality, it's the greatest game in the world for that reason, that you get yeah. to play as physical as you want to play legally. Yeah. Um, but you cannot be body slamming people and swinging at people over here because you're going to get ejected and you're going to hurt the team. And ideally, as a coach, you want to teach these kids yeah. that it's all about the team. Yeah. And this is a growing experience right here as well, where at the end of the day, there could be emotions running high. There could be things that are going on there, but you have these teachable moments that you teach kids that you get so caught up in the moment. But as you talked about, not only do they lose this, you know, they're out this game, but they're out this, the next game as well, which isn't good for anybody. So the officials have gotten it sorted out. It looks like it's going to be about a third and nine. There are some ejections, and we're trying to figure out if we can see some numbers, we can see some things that are going on here can't see anything yet I'm just judging by body language I think Jarek Brown they're one of their most explosive players he's got his pads off yeah. now I think he was one and you know that was a heck of a run by uh, Angel Torres over there yeah. before all that shenanigans went so on. here we go Angel Torres under center third down and Angel Torres keeps it on kind of a boot right now and as I was going to say, before that fight really, you know, escalated right there, Angel Torres has been playing tough. And he's trying to do a lot of things and make Number plays eight, happen. Angel and you got to respect that when a guy career. isn't going to quit when the odds are kind of stacked up against him. Yeah, and we saw him again with the boot action, which has been a successful play. But I do think that he had uh, Ricardo uh, Baldovinos open on that but yeah. didn't pull the trigger. Fourth. Sometimes when you got so many – Arvin Bears around you, you, you know, you're looking at them instead of downfield. But the, they potentially could have had an explosive play there. Fourth and five for the Lions. They go Number back to two, punt. Nose Garai is back Carlos there as well. Once again, these guys are driving me crazy by being right next to the ball, especially Nose Garai has got to back away from that. I know he's a playmaker. I know he's doing all that. But he's got to back away from that ball because it could bounce back and hit him, and it could be Miramonte's ball. Nonetheless, it's first down for the Arvin Bears on the 24-yard line. Well, I got to think Nozagarai and the other guy they had back there don't yeah. feel very comfortable fielding punts yeah. because they're letting everything drop in front of them and then letting it bounce, and it's, it's costing them some field position here. Um, you know, sometimes as a coach, if your guy's not great at fielding punts, then that's what you do. 
but uh, they could save some field position by scooting up and at least getting to a fair catch on that. Just noticed Pedro Colmanero, who scored the touchdown earlier, is on the bench sitting out. Want to see what's going on right that. And what's going right up the gut is number 31. That's Manuel Chavez. Gets about five, maybe six yards on the gain right there. Number 31. Appears to be about five. Nah, we'll give it six. So early in this game, Arvin had a lot of success going wide. Miramonte's adjustment was to put eight guys basically on the line of scrimmage. So Arvin's adjustment to that adjustment is to go right at him up the gut. And they picked up six yards on that one. Coming back to a double wing look there right now. Nine guys on the line of scrimmage right now. And they are doing a healthy dose right here. And this could be a long touchdown run. Right. Well, that's how you attack it if you're the Arvin Bears. Daniel Chavez, Daniel Chavez right there. All right, they got everybody spread out to take the perimeter away. You go right at them, and you get past that first level, and you're off to the races. So big play here for the, the Arvin Bears. They're set up in the red zone now at the 10-yard line. Um, and goal. We'll see if they come out in that power eye set that they ran successfully in the first half. And they do. They've got unbalanced here to the right side. Going right up the gut. That was a good hard run there. And it's going to be second down. It's going to be second and goal. Yeah, they went right to that unbalanced side. I mean, we got Gustavo Gallegos. And we have Manuel Chavez, running backs who we haven't called all night, that are getting their taste because we have some other guys that are out now, whether it's through injury or through ejection. And that's got to be a good sign that you have a little bit of depth right there. Yeah, he's not a real big kid, but he ran hard, attacked that, followed his blockers. Ball's handed up once again. Emmanuel Chavez, who's carried the rock three times on this drive right here. I think they're saying, hey, he carried the load down here. Let's try to get him a touchdown right off the bat. Great penetration there by Miramonte, saving the, the touchdown there. And that, hey, you got to get low pads and you got to get off the ball here. Um, attack those gaps. Try and make something big happen. No if you're Arvin, is this four down territory? And goal. Uh, I think it is. Yeah. You know, a, a field goal puts you up 22, but that's just a three possession game. Yeah. There. And it's handed off to Gallegos, who's fighting and scrapping. And that is a touchdown right there for the Arvin Bears. Touchdown. Boy, it wasn't by much. Miramonte yeah. really uh, pressed hard around the edges there and had a good hit on him, but his momentum carried him in the end zone there. Uh, Arvin looks like they're going to kick the extra point here. Up right now. Let's see, that, that'll put him at 26 if he makes it. The last one got blocked uh, right up the middle by Miramonte. So we'll see if any adjustments have been made here on the, the field goal unit. Antonio Garcia to attempt a point after. Little confusion on the Arvin Bears. You'd hate to blow a timeout uh, that, right here. I'd rather take the five yard penalty and move it back rather than call a timeout. Oh, but. Harvard. We'll see what happens right here. Yeah, it's funny. Again, when you, you get a player ejected, maybe he was the wing back and oh, yeah. not sure who the backup is. Um, or two guys go in there saying, I'll do it, coach. Uh, you know, all that stuff affects you when, when players that are on special teams, and that's usually where it's toughest to fill in, is uh, you may not have, you know, practiced your second string wing back on your field goal. We have five minutes and 31 seconds left. Miramonte. Trying to get on the board, and I hope Miramonte can get on the board. They're on a three-game kind of skid where they haven't scored a touchdown offensively. And we're going to wait right here to see if they get the extra point. At least the Arvin Bears get it. And the kick is up. 
And in a fashion we've seen all night, Garcia with the rocket <laughs> right through the uprights. Yeah, that wasn't as pretty as some of the other ones he kicked, but it did make it through. Yeah. So Miramonte here, if they can, right now, yeah, they they got to get snaps. Yeah. You know, they're not going to be able to make a comeback in this game if every fourth or fifth snap is wide or too hot to to handle. Yeah, these oh, and and I talked about it earlier. And my philosophy when I was coaching is get to a four possession ball game if I could because I knew a four possession ball game the odds are stacked. And right now Arvin's at that at that moment right here. We've seen crazy things happen in there. And like you said, Kevin Sumlin goes from being a genius against UCLA to being on the hot seat. And Jim Mora goes from being on the hot seat to being a genius, you know, in a matter of seconds. Really pulling for, you know, both schools to kind of get off the snide. Uh, let's see how Miramonte can respond right here. Miramonte's playing as if they're going to get a pooch kick here. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and a kicker that's put a couple in the end zone here. Let's see if he puts it in the corner. Ball goes up, and Garcia, as he's done a couple times tonight, has kicked it the kick out of bounds. I'd like to thank our sponsors, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, U.S. Army, have done so much to help the Kern High Network go full steam ahead. You know, we do, we're running two simultaneous football games, and it's just been a treat to be able to watch those as I – break down the game film, splice it up on Saturday mornings to look at that. It's been a treat to see how some of the other games have turned out. We've also been doing volleyball games, and that's been a real successful thing. Uh, this next week we got Stockdale against Clovis, so we can get a little taste of that as well. But it's been really great. Liberty High School with a big win against Clovis North in volleyball on Wednesday. And let me tell you, Elise Ferreira for the Liberty Patriots is a stud. And a quarterback sack. So the guy turns around, has a one-yard touchdown round, starts out on defense, gets a quarterback sack. That's Gallegos right there, number six. Yeah, again, the only way Miramonte has been able to make something happen is to get that quarterback outside the pocket. Arvin knows that and brought pressure from the outside uh, and able to get him a uh, six-yard loss there on first down. And it looks like we have another injury right here. Is it cramps? When they have that leg stretched out like that, it tends to be cramps right there. Again, this time of year, weather cools down, kids stop drinking water. Um, very frustrating. Once again, welcome to the Kern High Network, kernhighnetwork.com, live streaming today's game. The other game we have going on is a big east side rivalry between the East High Blades and the Highland Scots at Scotland Yard. And you talk about a very, very intense rivalry going on right there. That is a big game to look at. And let me see if I can find some scores going on over there so I can keep you guys informed. And it looks like if I can get it from there. Looks like Highland High School is up 15 to nothing. Wow, that's wow. impressive. Big game. Got Vance Palm over there on the mic with Rick Van Horn doing the play-by-play. Play. Play, to Talking to Coach Perucci at Shafter, he really, really, really wanted to play that Highland team, but that game got canceled due to the heat. So I know Highland's been on the up and up. I was fortunate to be a coach for Coach Gutierrez when he was at Foothill High School where he kind of got his start. And he is a quality coach, stickler to the details and all that stuff too as well. Five minutes and 15 oh, seconds oh, left. Looks look like it's going to be second and about 16 for the Miramonte Lions. Been kind of doing this all night long. Ball is on the ground, and the Bears are celebrating like they have it, and they were all over that beer. Yeah, they had two guys there, three yards in the backfield to make the tackle and the, the strip over there, and now Arvin's got the ball again inside the red zone. And Edgar Mara, if I'm a coach, he's going to try everything to get these guys timing. 
And it may seem like if he tries to pass the ball or do something like that, running up the score, but they've been on the wrong end of some games lately, so they need to be able to get some success and have these guys have that. Right. You're still in the third quarter of a game. His, his responsibility is to make his team as best as possible, and if it means working on the passing game, that's a yeah. good deal. And the ball is now given out to number seven. And a quick, quick touchdown right there. Arnie Pantoja, you know, fly sweep right there. Uh, you know, Miramonte, after that turnover, uh, struggled to respond defensively. So we still have 4.51 to go here in the, in the third quarter. And Arvin, uh, you know, with all the momentum, Number 23, Antonio Garcia to attempt the point after. And there's four minutes and 51 seconds left in the third. All right, bad snap there. Rolled back to the holder. He couldn't handle it. The conversion attempt is no good. And I'm going to tell you this. I mean, Arvin is going up against Taft and playing some of these teams right here. I know they're up big right now, but those small things on special teams, you talked about at the very beginning of the broadcast. I mean, that is the difference from a team moving to that next level of being consistently good and winning in the playoffs and winning in November football, we're going to call it, because that is the most important thing in the world is shoring up and cleaning up all those timing issues. And I know Coach Mar Mars is going to watch this film, and he's going to see that, and that's going to be something they're going to draw attention to. Yeah. And when you got a kicker with a 50-yard leg, you want to make sure that, that that remains a strength and not a liability because if you're getting field goals blocked, those are game changers yeah. that can go the other way to haunt you. So as a head coach each day, about how much time did you spend on special teams and working on that? Well, for me, we spent 25 minutes a day on special teams, which yeah. I think is more than most teams spend. But yeah. maybe it's just a pride factor. That's yeah. what I did in college. You know, I yeah. ran down on kickoffs. So I, I, as a coach, I've tried to take a lot of pride in coaching our special teams and uh, being really good at them. So you get 10 minutes of about individual yeah. work where your kickers are kicking, your yeah. punters are punting, your snappers are snapping, your guys catching kicks are doing that, and then about 15 minutes of, of teamwork and you know typically you you spend a little bit more time yeah. on punt than any yeah. other special team because that's the one that can be most explosive one way or another and making sure that guys maintain their lane integrity where they have to go and like you said doing their job because if a guy gets out of a lane that's just the wiggle room they have to get on there miramonte first down at the 20 and about a two yard pickup Yeah, you know, it's, uh, you know, Arvin is is still, again, all gas, no brakes here offensively yep. and defensively. They're taking it to it. Miramonte is a little bit slow getting up at a, a few positions here. These teams, again, are going to meet in, in three or four weeks to make up for the, yep. the missed game. And a big run, good battering run. And we look at number 30, and that's Nick Wall. He's had a few impressive runs right there, and they, they have Number some 30, things Nick right Wall there. And they, as they're trying to find their identity, you know, I've seen, you know, we see the double you know, wing right here. I've seen him come out and spread in years past to look at, you know, trying to establish identity, identity that's consistent for these kids, find a system to get them to go to their strengths. And Wall is met by a whole bunch of bears in the backfield, and it is fourth down. And once again, cold iron. He's left with a very tough decision. It's on his 27. He wants things to go right. He punts it away. Yeah, I think this is the right call by Coach that. Cold Iron yep. over here. You're down 32 points. It's Don't. fourth and three now. I mean, maybe you can make the first down, but yeah. But I'll say this. This is an opportunity. He's got to work on some of those things, work on that punt game. And now it looks like there's going to be a fake right here. They're getting under center. Maybe I think they're trying sneak. to draw them off sides. You know, fourth and three here. If you, you know, do that sudden shift and get somebody to jump, you get a free first down. Doesn't look like Arvin's going to bite, though. It looks like they're going back. I'm curious if they go off this shift. If 
A low, wobbly punt. Miramonte lands on it. A flag does come late, it looked like. Is it a flag or a beanbag? Maybe it's a beanbag. Official will throw that beanbag to Mark <laughs> where the ball was, yeah, yeah. was initially touched. It looked like a flag, though. He had a good yeah, he, on he checked it pretty well. <laughs> Is there a certain technique for throwing the beanbag? Uh, typically like a Frisbee, I believe. <laughs> In case you didn't know this, Coach Cornford was nose guard for the Lompoc Braves. Is that correct? Yeah, my senior yeah, year, uh, they our nose guard went down. They put me that nose. I played offensive guard as well, and the yeah. one guy on the team going both ways. So any chance to play defense, I took yeah, it. Absolutely. First down for the Arvin Bears. Come out in the double wing again, and it looks like they're going to have a healthy dose of our playmaker, number 11, who's been doing it all night, and he's dancing around a little bit, still refusing to go down, and a swarm of lions get all over him. But I am definitely impressed with Nozagarai, who has been running hard all night, and I think I've botched his name probably 100 times. My apologies, but he has run the ball well, started the night off with a 70-yard touchdown run, and he's just kind of been that playmaker. They've tried to take shots with him in the end zone, but he's a guy that you got to pay attention to. Second and short for the Arvin Bears. About two or three, about two or three yards. New quarterback under center, Angel Garza, replaces Contreras. And they have it handed off to the guy of last series, Manuel Chavez, who had that big long run, and they tried to get it in with him. I really like what Coach Mars is doing here, getting his backup quarterback some real Absolutely. meaningful minutes here. You know, in a game, you get one more score and you got a running clock and the kid gets about three snaps in. Right now, you're going to get this kid some meaningful snaps and work on his timing and, and be able to watch the film then yeah. of some real meaningful plays and make him better. Because, you know, yeah. if you lose your quarterback, that can really destroy your season if your yeah. backup's not prepared. First down, back to pass. Gets it up there, gets hit, and it's going to be picked by number one, Daniel Anthony. And Daniel Anthony kind of dances around, loses the ball for a second. But Daniel Anthony with the big interception for the Miramonte Lions. And Angel Garza took a shot there. He's coming up slow. Um, you know, getting a welcome to the to the game there by the Miramonte Lions who are, are not showing any signs of quit. They're coming after him. Well, that, you know, first turnover that we've seen there by the, the Arvin Bears, and Miramonte's got a shot, shot right now to try to right the ship and make some positive things happen. Interception return takes but you know what? I like what they're doing with Miramonte the backup quarterback. He's got to be able to throw the ball a little first bit too. And I'm telling you, as a former quarterback, you got to learn how to get pop, <laughs> you know, on varsity. So good thing right there. Miramonte goes back to the ground once again. It's number eight, Angel Torres who's been consistently trying his hardest to keep Miramonte in this game, but just not too many big plays. Maybe a first down, a 10-yard pickup here, but we need some explosive 20, 30-yard plays to get down the field, bring some energy and excitement. Second and seven for the Miramonte Lions. It just looks like Arvin is a little Second, more athletic eight, out wide the and then a little bit more physical up front, and that's tough to move the ball offensively when that's the case. Yeah. And what I've looked at this is number 55. We've said his name a few times. David Lopez 30, has been tough carry. up front. Number 55. Yeah, kid that David Lopez making the plays stop. on the offensive line and defensive line, and good, good yeah, hard tackle yard, right there. The yeah. Third down and about, I would say about seven, seven, eight, six or seven. And Arvin continues to. Keep most of their guys up tight at the line of scrimmage. Almost everybody within six yards. They got one safety back at about nine, and then he's moving up to about six or seven. Penalty marker on the field. It looks like it's going to be a delay game. game. Offense. They're going to add some more time on there. Hopefully it doesn't follow the same pattern at the end of the first half. Yeah, I brought it up. 
They're probably going to put some time on there. Yeah, if there was a delay of game, then there must be a second left. I want to give a special sh shout out to my Three stepson, Nathan, clock. right here. He's done a great job all night running the production side of things. At 13, he knows more about computers and things than I'll ever know. So he's done a great job all night. So thank you, Nathan, for doing a good job. It must be nice to have a teenager at home to show you how to work everything. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Julian, you doing okay? Yeah, he's doing a good job. Our camera guy. <laughs> In case you didn't know, Julian was a former wide receiver at Fresno State Bulldogs. He looks like he can still play some ball. Yeah, I'm, I'm scared of him every time I work with him, man. I'm glad he's on our team. Miramonte with the carry. That's number 21. That is Francisco Cruz and... That alarm will bring it to the end of the third quarter. We're on the Kern High Network. I want to thank our sponsors once again, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union and the U.S. Army. Done a great job supporting us all season. Make sure you guys go to kernhighnetwork.com. All games will be archived. And every game that we've covered so far, including the scrimmage and some great games, if you haven't watched the Liberty Clovis West game, what a great game getting down to the wire. It was amazing. I got to call that game. Yeah, that was, that a, was cool, a blast. Yeah, you were right there. And then we did the Frontier Frontier Ridgeview game, and that was another great game where Frontier kind of showed some things that they could do a little bit here or there. Ty Johnson. You know, yeah, he was a great addition to them, giving them the home run hitter that maybe they haven't had in a while. And Coach Bandy knows how to use good backs. He was my offensive coordinator wow. when we were at West. And, yeah. uh, well, he's, he was able to use those good backs they had right there. And they had J.J. Flores where they'd go over the top he's with, and he's just a playmaker. J.J. is as fast as any year. kid in town. Yeah, and you saw him last year when you were out there. But great games. You get to see a little bit of chapter we've seen go on. So here we go, fourth down for Miramonte as we start this fourth quarter. 32 to nothing. And the punt's off. Not a bad little punt. Our speed guy right here is trying to figure out if he wants the ball. Actually does pick it up, and he looks like he kind of gets crunched around. Very, very dangerous play. Not a fan. I'm going to tell you that. Not a fan of that. You can lose the ball, do all these little things, but you know what? You have a playmaker like that. I do kind of like a little bit of the moxie that's out there with him. Yeah, and again, one of those situations, and it happens a lot in high school football yeah. where a kid hesitates to catch the ball in the air, feels more comfortable mm -hmm. fielding it on the ground. See who's a quarterback first. this time for <clears throat> Arvin because their backup got drilled. Yep, he's back in there, Angel Garza. Let's see how he steps up, see if they give him another chance. Hands it off. Right to number seven and is met almost instantly by the guy we've been calling all night, their safety again. Yeah, that fly sweep was successful for him early on in the game. But Felipe Calderon has uh, single-handedly destroyed that play. Arvin's had most of their success lately going up the gut. So second and 13 now for Arvin. Ball at the 42. Miramonte's got everybody up tight. And they struggle with the exchange here again. But this is why you have your backup quarterback in there. He's going to make some mistakes. Um, but he's one play away from being the guy that has to be in there. Yeah, and you hate it when you're, you want your backup quarterback to get some reps. But as a coach, sometimes there's the frustration. He's had one interception and a lost fumble right off the bat. You give them those opportunities, and you want them to kind of get through those mistakes. But it's a whole different game when you're when you're up here and having that first down for Miramonte as they're on the 38-yard line. Dive inside that uh, Arvin defends pretty well. Arvin working uh, multiple guys in the game right now, trying to get. It a lot of guys reps, got guys running in, running out. 30, Nick, Wally on the carry. Nick Wally with the carry. It's going to be about the 35 yard line. second and seven. I Pro do got to say this. I like seeing Angel Torres still out there. Go ahead, Coach. For, you, for Coach Mara's, it's good to get 
reward these guys with a little bit of playing time. I know they probably haven't been able to do that in a while. Yeah. These kids work out there hard every day, you know, all summer long and in the Number weight room. And, uh, you know, a lot of times kids don't get into games. It's not recreational league where everybody gets Michael to play. Yeah. Uh, to but when you got a chance like this and kids get to actually be rewarded by playing the game, it's, it's special for them. Third and two right now for Miramonte. Ten minutes left in the fourth quarter. Been kind of one-sided tonight for Arvin High, but they're trying to get their first win since October of 15. Wall with a nice run, like seeing the not stopping, not quitting. So good run for Nick Wall. And again, you know, Miramonte, be interesting to see how this game would turn out if they had consistent snaps all night long. That's really put them, you know, behind the chains. Uh, so anxious to see if they can sustain this drive. Once again, Miramonte gets nowhere. Yeah, good job attacking by Antonio Bantoja there. Um, and he's down on the play here. You know, he, you brought up some good points. These teams got to play each other again. And if I'm going back and looking on this film, there are some positives. Is how do we get more touches? I would say, how can we be creative? with our quarterback, Angel Torres, because he's got something there. How can we utilize him? They did some boots in the beginning. I like that approach. Kind of maybe gone away with it. Maybe it's out of necessity because of the fact that the score's kind of gotten lopsided. I do like what I'm seeing with Wall, and I think he has a potential to maybe do some things and help them out and get them out in space. They kind of used him in between the tackles a little bit. What, what, what can they do with him to increase that? And Hector Suareta, we saw him. He's about four or five yards just – Hey, your battering ram, get him in there. But you got to have a JJ. <laughs> you know, you can't, you can't always have that. But you got to have someone who is a fast guy that can be out there on the edge that they can get the ball to. Yeah, and then you know the ability to stretch the field vertically with your passing game. Yeah. Miramonte hasn't shown shown that, and it makes it very very tough to move the ball when they basically know you're going to go between the tackles or maybe a bootleg. You know, you you. Got to find a way to be a little bit more diversified. But, it, you know, again, easier said than done. If you don't have the weapons yeah. out there, if, if their cornerbacks can lock up on your guys and cover zero like Arvin's been able to do, press up against them so you can't run bubble screens, but then yeah. you can't run around them, um, you know, it, it's a tough, tough road to hoe there. 32-0, Arvin High over Miramonte, nine minutes and 23 seconds left in this game. You hope that every Number player enjoys the Friday night Antoine lights, but they come off the game safe and okay. And I want to say happy birthday to number 49, Emmanuel Morales. All right, Miramont has got a second and 11 here. Um, this is where they've kind of gone with bootlegs trying to get the, yeah. the big play, but I think Arvin may be on to that too. And we'll see how Angel Torres does right here. Stayed in the double wing. Once again, they're getting a healthy dose of wall that's going on there. A consistent receiver that we've seen, Ricardo Baldovinos. He's been consistently being spread out. wonder if he's got a chance. He did have a catch earlier on on kind of a rollout and all that stuff. Haven't really gone back to him since, but he's consistently been the guy that's been out there. wonder if that's a weapon. They look at those touches. I know I kind of saw the Bengals last night, and they're you know going against the Texans and A.J. Green. Almost no doubt, one of the greatest receivers Third we have out. So you got to look at those touches that you're giving. But your they weapons. struggle with their protection too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Once again, it's Wall. You know, the the one thing I think I would try if I was Miramonte is just keeping everybody in the block. You got one on one out there. Yeah. Max protect. Yeah. Don't worry about motions or shifting or anything. Just keep everybody in the block to give your yeah, quarterback time and throw one up. Play. Yeah. Because hey, they're stacking the box, just run a one receiver route. That's all you need. Just right. Give it a you throw a 50-50 yeah. ball yeah. Um, up there, and that the you know maybe eventually you could have that force them to pull a safety over there to help. But right now everybody's in the box. You got one-on-one -on -one matchups. Um, and we see the quarterback, and it looks like he's going to get a first down. I'm telling you what, Angel Torres. It's going to be awful close here. 
I have been impressed with Angel Torres. He is a competitor. I can tell he's not quitting. You can just tell in the body language and attitude. I know he wants to win doing out there, but he's in the now. He's in this play. How can we win this play right now? And more than having a strong arm or this or that, yeah. having a competitor at quarterback yeah. is critical because every player on that offense is looking at him in the eye every before every yeah. snap, you know, in the, in the huddle there. And they can tell if the body language isn't there, you're bringing your whole team yeah. down. And you look for the same thing in a middle linebacker on defense because that's the guy that, you know, uh, he's got to have that something extra. Yeah. And it looks like it's going to be short. And Arvin's going to get the ball back with seven minutes and 50 seconds left. You know, one thing that you did talk about, that competitive nature that goes on there. One of my best buddies who passed away way too soon, John Wren, often told me and would tell coaches and would tell players, and the motto that we had is there's really two things that we can control in football. That's our attitude and that's our effort. And that is the one thing that no matter what the score is, you don't get judged by that. You get judged by your attitude and your effort of how you handle things. And I will say this, even the scores looking down, Angel Torres has had a great attitude and a great effort, and he's trying to compete like it's a 0-0 ball game. First down for the Bears. Once again, we got Angel Garza in at quarterback, and it's been kind of a rough night that we can see right here, but another big play by the name we've called out a lot, Felipe Calderon in the backfield. That, again, another guy, I think he's the yeah. leader on their defense over there, and you see the effort that that, that he's played. He's made multiple yeah. plays for, for a loss of yardage over there, attacking aggressively. Yeah. They got some pieces here or there. It's just gelling together as a team, believing Lost in each other. And, and that's the one thing, and hopefully they can get back on the Second snide and, and get some points and get some belief the in there. I see the D coordinator over there, Raul Rodriguez, another Foothill grad. I know he's not stopped coaching, and he's, you know, coaching like it's 0-0. You like to see that with your coach. Well, the, Miramonte did It'll make some good adjustments yeah. over here. You know, they – um, I think that uh, Arvin is the more athletic team, yeah. and so Miramonte has to overplay their hand a little bit. They have to overplay the uh, fly sweep, you know, or overplay the the inside game. They've got to kind of guess a little bit, and it, it's tough to win games when you got to guess, but that's what he's he's got to do because I, I think that Arvin is, has better athletes. Yeah. So here we go, it's pushed back. It's second and really long for Arvin. It's gonna be a timeout for the Arvin Bears. Coach Mars continues to use his backup quarterback yeah. in there, trying to get him some meaningful snaps and hopefully you know, have him get a little bit of success. Angel Garza is a, a junior right now. He could be the guy uh, in the future. Uh, you know, and you, you need to get him some confidence but something's got to go right for you to build yeah. confidence, and it yeah. hasn't really gone right for him yet. And it's that timing thing. It's the quarterback being confident out there. I know sometimes you get over those Friday night lights. I remember the sophomore getting moved up, and all of a sudden you're into those lights, and you're with these big old guys, and it can be a little shaky sometimes, but you learn how to deal with those lights. I remember one game going one for seven, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, that one – that one completion against Watsonville High School was a game-winning touchdown. So <laughs> I was awful all the way to the very end of the game. So when it mattered, right, to have it on there. It was on a hook and ladder. To, it was the hook to Nick Metaltia and then the ladder to Scott Smith, and he high-stepped in the end zone. So it's we funny. got a little penalty, penalty we got on there, but I'll remember that till the rest of my life. Man. My junior year, we beat Rigetti on a hook and ladder oh, okay. with 20 seconds left. John Chaney to Sheldon Canley. Oh, and it looks like he's wrapped up. Is it going to be a safety? And I think it's going to be down on the one. So it's going to be third down for the Arvin Bears. For Miramonte, you know, pride still matters for yeah, them. These, these kids are playing their tails off. Uh, no sign of quitting them. And also for Miramonte, they got 11 quarters, 11 and a half quarters without any points on the board. So getting any points any way they can is important. Yeah, so what do you call here if you're Coach Mara's boy? I think I'd Quarterback dive. Might get in that power <laughs> eye set and try and 
get my punter some room. Dive, dive forward. Get it out of there. All right. And it looks like they're in their power eye set. And they're going to hand it off Gallegos unless he takes it 99 yards to the house right here. There is a penalty on the on the lawn right now. We'll penalty see what that is. Maybe holding. Field. Might have brushed the face mask a little Maybe. bit there. Just saw a little tiny head movement. I don't know if that's what was called or not. I do got to say this, that Gustavo oh, Gallegos. Holding. You're right with the holding Offense. call there. Gustavo Gallegos, I like how he kind of runs. He's like no, a third or fourth back for these, for these Arvin Bears. He runs aggressively. He really attacks the line of scrimmage and makes good cuts. You know, some guys kind of stop on their cuts. He makes that, that one solid step cut that you like to see. You know, I've looked down here and I've seen number 25, Pedro Colmanero. He scored a touchdown earlier. He hasn't really been back. I don't think he was you know, part of that big melee right there, but hopefully he's okay and, you know, there's nothing serious that goes on there. Sometimes as a coach, after there's been a, a fight in the game, you want to make sure your guys, if, if you've got the game in hand, that nobody's going to get kicked out. Yeah. And so uh, you'll you'll take those guys out too and then again yeah. give yeah. give other guys a shot here. Gallego is still running hard, and it looks like it's fourth down. It's going to be the punt team coming back on. The clock is ticking, going on five minutes in the fourth quarter of this game. Number six, Gustavo Gallegos, the ball carrier. So again, working guys in and out. Sometimes your starters get too comfortable, but they're the you know the starting tackle on the punt team. They forget yeah. to go out, but Arvin's got everybody out there. Number 24, Edgar Pelafox back deep to return. Curious what the penalty is right there. Penalty marker on the field. Got to think he maybe thought that the Arvin players were a little too close, didn't give him a chance to catch that ball. Yeah. Ball had some pretty good hang time on it. He's calling a fair catch there too. We'll see how this marches back. Four minutes and 37 seconds left in this game in God's country at Barley Stadium in Arvin High School. I want to thank our sponsor, Kern Schools Federal Credit Union, U.S. Army, Pap Solar and Communication, Premier Lighting, Tony's Pizza, Raymond's Trophies. They've all done their part to help get the Kern High Network where it is. Each week we have two games. Next week we have some new schools that we'll take a look at. We're going to have West at Stockdale. West, surprisingly, has done some positive things. Coach Dunham's got them moving in the right direction over there at West High. Coach Shelton and Jalen Smith, the quarterback for Stockdale. That'll be interesting. Dynamic athlete, by the way. Watch him play second base for the Stockdale Mustangs. is pretty amazing. Wall with the carry on the first down. Appears to be second and nine. We're also going to have Golden Valley and Highland. So that'll be another fun one to look at. Carl Jones, if you have not seen Carl Jones yet, he is the real deal at Golden Valley. And it looks like you know, last time we checked, Highland Scots were up on the East High Blade, Second 15 to nothing. Eight. We'll take a look and see how if that score has been updated yet or not. Yeah, that uh, West High Stockdale game should be real interesting. Jalen Smith uh, taught with his dad at West High, uh, and then my son played basketball with him. But he has always been a great athlete, and he's heading to UC Davis on a baseball scholarship. And they moved him to quarterback, and, you know, he's just such a natural good athlete and a good leader out there uh, that, that that's really helped that Stockdale program. And then Coach Dunham over there yeah. at West High, oh, yeah. along with some of my old buddies there, Wyatt Ross, they've done a great job with that program, uh, you know, getting the athletes out and uh, finding a system that they could work with. So it was at the BC game, their first game. I had to go there. We helped them out with live stream. I see Wyatt Ross and Coach oh, Dunham up in their stand. And probably – with one of the most legendary coaches around Kern out. County, Coach Dameron. And I'm talking old man Dameron that was up there. And I'll never forget it. Coach Dameron has no idea who I am, all right? He, I, I can walk down the street and no idea who I am. But I had the most memorable practice I've ever been to was watching him teach the old line at South High how to do simple stances and get-offs. And it was the most impactful thing that he – 
he has no idea that impact that was on me. But it was the coolest thing. And I mean, it's just literally put your your knees are grapefruits. You want to put your hands on the grapefruits and squeeze and go like that. Fix your gaze straight ahead. Arch. I mean, it was the most amazing time that I have. And as a young coach, kind of learned the system. Being a quarterback, hey, I learned anyone could be a play caller. Anyone could draw something or go on Madden. But to learn the intricacies of being an offensive lineman and how they block and how they move and the angles that they take. Coach Dameron, I say thank you for all of your impact on me. Third down for the Miramonte Lions, dropping back right here. And here's what we've been talking about all night is taking a shot down the field, overshoots him, but why not? You're down 32 to nothing, have a chance to maybe work on some things. Yeah, that was, you know, uh, good ball over there. Uh, threw it high, just slightly overthrown, but again, gave him a shot. And again, I think you had a, the nail on the head there as, as a young coach it's important for the young coaches to learn yeah. every position and yeah. not just say hey yeah. I'm a quarterback guy I'm a wide receiver guy yeah. but to, to learn all the aspects of the game but it's one of those things as a, as a young coach it's it's how you know you teach your kids to be tough and do all these different things on there but being a young coach is not about me. It's about the kids and how to put the kids in the best position to win. And kids will know if you know what you're talking about or you don't know what you're talking about. So you got to prepare and know all those positions. So being a quarterback that in high school, then all of a sudden I turn around and next thing you know, I'm coaching O-line and being an offensive coordinator because the O-line was so important to me to make sure that wasn't messed up. So, yeah, I, I did the the D evolution. I was a yeah. quarterback in junior high. Yeah, uh, pretty boy, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, my brother was a stud offensive lineman. And I guess they figured once I got to high school that <laughs> I I should follow his footsteps. Yeah, yeah. And so all of a sudden I get thrown on the blocking sled, and you know, <laughs> yeah. it, it was the best thing to happen to me. Uh, it made me tougher. Uh, I think it made me a yeah. much better, more knowledgeable football player. First and 10 for Arvin, and once again, we see number seven, Arnie Pantoa, who's already had a touchdown today, have a big, big run for the Arvin Bears. Boy, and hats off to wide receiver uh, Hilario Ortiz out there, doing a great job blocking down the field to allow that play to become explosive over there. A lot of times you see receivers who they, they haven't had many balls thrown to them. You know, they just kind of stand it around out there. He very aggressively went out there and blocked that corner, set that play up. So a little success here now for Angel at, at quarterback. Uh, he get a little momentum, get some timing going here. And look at that, still running the ball hard. And I completely agree with you. Leave him in there. Let him have those mistakes. Let him, let him deal with an interception. Let him deal with those things that are going on there. Gets the ball down to the 45-yard line. Yeah, you're right, because that, that's a, in every game valuable. that matters, there's going to be adversity. He's come in. He's faced some adversity. Now he's, you know, when you look at the, 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 the timing of this Arvin offense, is very tight. And uh, if he can get some good work on that as they run the fly sweep yeah. and carries out his fakes. Um, that's going to help him in the future. Well, I'll tell you this as a quarterback, the most high-profile position where everybody, you go up and ask a random person, a non-football person, they know what a quarterback is. It's the most recognized position. And sometimes has a lot of pressure with that. And the spotlight is on them because the ball is always in their hands every single play. And for a young quarterback to go through that and – Hats go out to Coach Mars is to believe in him after two turnovers. Not give up on him, but keep him in there. And that does a lot that he's not giving up on me. I get my opportunity and my shot. Really like that approach. Right. If a quarterback doesn't have confidence, he's in big trouble. Absolutely. Once again, Arnie Pantoa right here is trying to look for the paint, and he has a big first down. Arvin Bears, still, I mean, the Miramonte line still playing tough number on seven, defense. Arnie this clock is winding down. One minute, 29 Chico. seconds left. Again, the, the perimeter blocking by Arvin is, is really good, and I know Miramonte field, struggled with that a little bit uh, in this game. It looks like Highland just had a big interception. And it seems like they're going to run out the clock. 
I'm reading it right now. And I think they're going to win 15-7 over the East High Blades. What a game. Okay, 15-7. Wow, 15 so seven, big game. that interception, interception came at a critical time, critical I'm assuming. Critical time to go out there. First down again for Arvin. They're running the ball hard. The clock is ticking. Looks like they're going to. I've always wanted to do this. Chris Berman, dick, 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 dick. dick. <laughs> All right. I've had fun with you tonight, Coach Cornford. It's been a blast. Everybody We're going to be the Northern League boys whenever we do this together. So hey, that sounds keep just about spirit, right. Spirit alive going on there. We've got about a minute three left. Game will be archived and put on Kern High Network in the next few days. Tomorrow, the Kern High Network will be doing some coverage of cross country out at Hart Park. We're going to delve into that a little bit to see what we can do out there. Have some fun with that and uh, excited to excited to be out there and try to cover a wide variety of different sports because I just want kids to be active. We just want kids to be active and healthy lifestyles and activities and athletics are the way to go. And I think building those memories, you know, and, yeah. and those kids will have that for the rest of their lives, just like Excellent. I showed you my old <laughs> game films here. And hopefully you'll put those up online. Hey, and we are, we are going to, one of these days, the Northern League boys are going to have their their highlights on there. It looks like Arvin High in victory formation is going to chop it. Edgar Mares, hats go off, break this losing streak, get off the snide. David Coldiron, I'm looking over there. He's still coaching, still out there, still the headsets on. I like Coach Rodriguez over there, is getting out over there, is trying to do things and trying to get them fired up. 35 seconds left. Well, this is going to be a great feeling for Coach Mares, his staff in this town, you know, and these, these kids to, to get that win. Awful special. They'll sleep good tonight. They'll enjoy this weekend, that's for sure. And that looks like that's going to be it. So, ladies and gentlemen, the final score, Miramonte 0, Arvin And that's it right there, the final score, 32 to nothing. We are going to take a short, short break, probably just a few minutes to look at it. We got to recognize our sponsors real quick, but we will be back. The Kern High Network, give our final thoughts and give our Tony's Pizza player of the game. Be back in just a second. Every team trains hard. Every team prepares to win. When U.S. Army soldiers take the field, it's best if the other guys don't bother showing up. See if you have what it takes at GoArmy.com slash team. One thing about Kern Schools is you get to do your banking your way. I'm a traditional banker. I still like writing checks and visiting my branch. As a millennial, for me, it's all about the mobile. And I'm somewhere in between. I still do everything online or through an ATM. So no matter how you do your banking, Kern Schools is always there. That's why we're the number one financial institution in all of Kern County. Take advantage of our low mortgage rates, including 60-day rate lock and no cost to you. Purchase or refinance your home today. Kern Schools, together we have something special. Welcome everybody. It's been a festive night, been an exciting night for the Arvin Bears. Get their first win in a while, and I know that's gonna be a big sigh of relief for Coach Mares and his staff. What are some of your thoughts on this game, Coach Cornford? 
Well, I think Arvin, you know, they've got a talented roster over yeah. here. They're well coached by Coach Mara's and company. Uh, they got multiple weapons. Um, you know, they're going to be a team to, to watch here. I think they can uh, compete and, and, you know, depending on where they get seeded in the playoffs, might might be able to make it a, a bit of a run. I, this will not be their last win of the year. I'll guarantee that. Yeah. And they have Taft next week. We see how they bounce back. Miramonte, we've all been there as coaches and kind of down right now trying to figure things out. I will tell you this, the score looks a little lopsided, but from what we've watched from the coaches and the players, they never quit and never gave up, and that speaks volumes about a program. And I have a tremendous amount of respect for David Coldire oh, yeah. over there, you know, and really trying to establish that program. It's been a tough uh, school uh, athletically, you know, since it was opened. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he's he's a good guy. He's in it for the right reasons. He's the kind of guy I'd love to have my son coached by. Yeah. Um, so, you know, he, he's got some work ahead. He knows that. Uh, they know that um, over there. Um, but those kids will learn valuable life lessons, yeah. and, uh, you know, they'll be all right. I think it was Rocky who once said, it's not about how hard you get or when you get knocked down. It's how you get back up, you know. And I just think about – those guys, and I know Coach Rodriguez as a as a former player of mine when he was at Foothill, and seeing him grow as kind of a coach, that they're going to bounce back and do the best they can to represent Miramonte the right way. It's that time. Looking for the Tony's Pizza Player of the Game. It's a tough one. There's a lot of dynamic players that were out there tonight for Mir for Arvin High School. Who do you have? Well, I think uh, Nazaraga is the guy that I would go for. Yeah. He he made uh, a lot of no, a lot of good plays. He's explosive. We knew that coming in that he was one of the guys they looked yeah. at to be explosive, and he was there for all four quarters. So he he would get my vote. Julian, do you have anyone? Number eleven. Number eleven. He can't he can't say his last name just like I can't say his last name either. Um, I'm gonna have to third all of that. And I was like, oh, guy starts off the game. So remember, we go way back in the first quarter. We had a penalty on Arvin, and then a botch snap, and we're like, man, this is going to be hard for Arvin. And then a 70-yard touchdown run, and he got Arvin going in the right direction. So congratulations, and I know I've messed your name up, Carlos Narzugaray. I think I even butchered it then. I apologize. I'm coming out to Arvin High School to give you your Tony's Pizza gift certificate good for a free Tony's Pizza. Make sure you eat the Chili Verde Pizza. It is delicious if you had it there. I have not had it. It is absolutely delicious. I recommend it for everyone. You'll get a Tony's Pizza t-shirt as well and the famous pizza boxing will be all over our social media. This has been Kyle Wiley and Rich Cornford of the Kern High Network, kernhighnetwork.com. You can see us on our Twitter handle, at KHSD Athletics. You'll see all the highlights and replays tonight's game all over there. They're flooding with Twitter. Um, you also see us on Facebook, Kern High Network. Visit us on YouTube, see all the archive games and other creative footage. Ryan Matthews stuff that you've given me, A.J. Jefferson stuff, Matt Dar, you name it. People in Bakersfield that have been doing things throughout the generations are all on our YouTube channel. Kern High Network. We're putting a lot of work to make this a special thing for the athletes of Kern County. I hope all of you have a safe night. Get home safely and alive. We love you guys. Have a good rest of the night. God bless.